<laughs> my favorite story is that Katia uh, prayed for you to be pretty one day. Yeah, shut <laughs> <laughs> I get Me in touching there. object in okay, She knows her job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <wow>. Shit! <laughs> That's why you're here. You. Oh, yeah. That's wow. why you're here. That'd be important. He's like, mommy. He goes, um, I died, and God picked me to come to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh, cheers again. This is the real one. <laughs> this is the real one. All right, we're here with pretty much the Feliciano family. We got my aunt, my aunt, oh, I must said uncle, cousin, <laughs> and I got my brother here. You son of a gun. <laughs> All right, so fucking cheers again. It's not even open. Cheers. Okay, First Feliciano stream. First Feliciano yeah. stream, and we got a bunch of these mother <laughs> Yeah, damn. We got my aunt, we got my uncle, I'm just joking again. That was on purpose this time. <laughs> my cousin, my brother. Mm-hmm. Um, first we see on the stream, then all the expenses. Let's move on. <laughs> I did want to start off. I'm going to start off here, and how I like to do it. I don't care where it goes and where it stops. And if you want to talk, just bring it in. Just say something. Mm-hmm. And if there's a topic like you want to just, just bring it in. I want to start off with uh, Sage because I want to lead into a little bit of the your like medical history thing. You don't have to go. Don't go too deep, but just okay. and then leading into uh, photography. You know, especially when it comes around the eye. Okay. And then, like, why did you choose that? Because I honestly don't know why you chose photography. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it sounds like backwards. It almost seems like you're doing it out of spite of your, like, ailment. Uh-huh. But then, like, is it that? Or is it just, like, pure passion? You're like, fuck the ailment. You know what I mean? Yeah. My first, like, introduction to photography technically was Uncle Albert always doing it. But I always didn't find it interesting, honestly. And then Albert I got. Did you too good. What? Huh? I said Albert didn't do too good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I found his art more interesting. I guess he was good. Like yeah. it wasn't was as interesting compared to his art. I guess. Yeah. But um, I got yearbook in high school, and I knew I wasn't going to be there because that's when my kidney was failing again, mm-hmm. and the teacher knew me from a prior class. And I'm like, what should I do in this class? And he's just like, just take pictures around the city and that'll be like your grade. And so I did that on my phone at the time and just had a random like photo editing app on my phone. <clears throat> and then I just got really into it like that way. And then uh, David, Uncle Albert's Oh father, yeah, I got to the camera. Yeah, mm-hmm. he got me the first camera. And that was around when I was like touring colleges, and uh, when I went to it's a nice camera too. It was, yeah, it was that camera. Yeah, the 80, yeah. Canon ADD. Yeah. I spent seventeen hundred on that moment. <laughs> yeah, you got it for free. A good <laughs> nice. camera, and I went to the school and like I explained my medical history because that was a big factor, mm. like how my grades would work. And they're like, as long as you make it to the class, you're fine. Uh, as long as you get your assignments and you're fine. And I'm like, okay. And then I went to orientation and they mentioned internships. And I'm like, okay, I'll just look into it. And I went in for like a social media intern. And it was for like a marketing duo. They handle a lot of social media for different businesses in Chicago, like uh like restaurants, hotels, jewelry stores, like everything. And uh, <clears throat> so I got a lot of like practice with them. And we found out after like it was, I accepted it that I couldn't get credit for it, <laughs> like mm-hmm. any school credit. So they just gave me a Mac and uh, I'm like, okay, cool. And then I started working with like a bunch of people that way. And that got me out of the, shooting like cityscape and working with people more Mm -hmm. and it kind of just snowballed from there like i chose film school just because like i wanted to tell like medical stories like accurately but like not as dramatized Mm -hmm. and then um i just got distracted by photography i guess i got more into the photography and that made me want to like share it. And that's how I came up with 4% vision because. 
Five percent. Four. It's four. You guys kidding me? How are you going to tell me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how are you going to tell me? It's a hundred percent, four percent. I would have bet my life it was five percent. <laughs> are you kidding me? I'm going to it up and try to tell you. I'm like, is something wrong with you? <laughs> Yeah, what? That's your name. No. Name. Four percent vision. All right, yeah. glad we got that out. Four <laughs> percent. I swore it was five. So you were originally going in for film, and then yeah. you found out that you liked photography more, and you just started to go more towards that route. Yeah, like definitely hard no. that route because, like, I my major is still cinematography to do that, and I've done like all the jobs that would be on set. Like I've done them at least once, but photography. I'm way better at it because yeah. I like hyper focus and practiced on that. And I made like really good connections on my own. And that's how I've made most of my friends after college. I just, or after high school, I just go to meetups or like people hear about me and ask me to shoot. And all my shoots are free. Or all my first shoots are free. And then it's charged after. Mm -hmm. And that just gets me to get to know them and their style so I can like recommend them for other projects or like use them in my work mm -hmm. later. How's the uh, money? Not like numbers, but like, are you like you, you're moving on to LA? You're mm -hmm. good. You can, you can pay like that pays the bills plus <coughs> get, and then live just living. Not yet. I feel like I could be, but I haven't really like, focused on doing that because and in LA you'll have nothing else but to focus on that kind of because I got the last semester they messed up my scholarships and I had to borrow money from Sarai and like I felt bad about that but I'm like I'll just get a bunch of scholarships for next semester and pay you back mm -hmm. when I get them and I did that like before even the semester started this semester and then I got even more like reimbursement. And so I've been saving that for LA. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna be using that while I'm there. And my my housing's already covered out there for four months. Maybe That's a big yeah, part. Yeah. 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 I do, especially out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Do you have AC? Huh? Do you have AC? Yeah, I know you're saying it like yeah, but let me take some of it. And it makes no, it makes no do. sense in yeah, LA. Yeah. It's so hot, and it's a luxury <laughs> to have mm -hmm. AC. Like our house didn't have AC, our place, yeah. and it was right there on LA. I mean, what was it? La Brea and like um, what's the other one? and it was on Cochrane, but it was like La Brea and what's the big, it, uh, Wilshire, which is like you can see the Hollywood signs right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I can, like, I walked to Sunset Boulevard before. <laughs> Not the best walk, but I've done it many times. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's, like, it's right there. No AC. Yeah. You're paying, like, I forgot that it was the rent was still, like, nuts. But it was, like, no AC. Be yeah. So yeah. hot. When it was hot, it's hot. You that, put the windows on, fans, do whatever you can just to try. And, like, like it seems criminal to even how yeah. this could even be a thing. How It's I so hot here. I wonder if that's How's because no California is so long. So you have, like. The northern part and then the southern part. And usually northern states, that's not a, like, staple. But think but about this, like, where we're at here. Like, are we, even in, like, Chicago, how many houses mm -hmm. have you been that has no AC? Okay, okay, okay. All right, let's not talk about Chicago. No, here, no, like, no. we're pretty much, we're pretty close, I guess, on the, I would have seen. We're pretty close Most on the, 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 the line. Most Florida have AC. I haven't been. Yeah, I, haven't, yeah. never, I haven't been to a house that didn't have AC. Yeah. It's like, you need I didn't it think houses here. come with no AC. Yeah. Or even, like, apartments. I, I think that, I thought that was, like, not happening. Yeah. Over there. All over the place. Yeah, they it's definitely weird. have weird. AC. And you feel like you need it so bad out mm -hmm. there. It's a different kind of heat. It's like, yeah, it's, it's, dry. A desert. it's, it's dry. dry. Yes. Yeah. 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 So as long as you have that, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> and you begin, if you're struggling, like you come home, like bad night of work and you're like stressed and you come home into that hot ass house. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> if you, yeah. Had, you thought you were going to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're fucking, but you can't es you can't escape it. You go yeah. outside, still hot. Your house still hot. Yeah, it's the worst. It's the worst. Yeah, yeah. And you need AC out there. Luckily, my job's gonna pay for my transportation, like to and from work, and mm -hmm. like food while I'm there and stuff. How far yeah. is it between? It depends what where we're shooting. We're gonna no, no, use well, different. Oh, I see. Locations. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just gonna be doing <clears throat> photography and whatever I want for them. 
like they trust me already because I technically been working for them since 2021. Like they've been sending me March to shoot in Chicago, but like since I'll be out there and they're out there, I'm going to be every day over there basically. In your average shoot, how many uh, photos are you actually going through and editing in your average shoot? Because I know you, you do a wedding shot, you might have 300, 400 yeah. uh, shots that you got to go through. That's what I do, That's basically. Brutal. In an average shoot. You do everything I hate, online? Yeah. Cause it's, what well, you can, do, you can copy paste some things. Like if it's in the same like mm -hmm. area, Lighting your scenario. settings from here, you just copy and paste like all those. And you, then you fine tune a little here or there. You might yeah. have the skin softening and things like that if you if you need to. It depends on the shot. Yeah, much more portrait, but if it's close up, you want to like do some things like that. But as far as you can literally copy paste the settings for a particular spot, the lighting's the same yeah. and all that, and then you can just do some minute details. So you do that, but mm -hmm. I, I, I had the longest I ever, most I ever had was like a fifty one. I did for a graduation. That was brutal, <laughs> well, brutal. I hate that process. But I used to do like four edits for everyone, like all the photos, but. I found a way m more manageable way. It's just doing the copy paste, like you said, mm -hmm. like syncing all that mm -hmm. and doing minor adjustments. And then I send them those. And then I ask them at first to send me one to 10 that they really like for the, f the full edits, like softening skin and stuff. And then uh, if they ever want any more after fully edited or after I fully edited those, then uh, they could just message me, but it's a smart way to go about it. Yeah, mm. people really want more than ten, so yeah, that's all I do. Yeah, ten, yeah, legit. Mm. Well, that's what I mean. Like you're not editing three hundred though. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You I'm might have the taken basic that. But, oh, I see. Yeah, the full. Yeah, the full like get me touching there. object. Okay, result. she knows her job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, shit. <laughs> That's why you're here. You. Oh, yeah. That's wow. why you're here. That'd be a part. Blood for Yeah. Okay. Can I have a cut back? I okay. guess. And then recently, I've been doing more fashion shows, which I don't do events, but Ew. those fashion shows it's way are really yeah. fun. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. More fashion shows? Go ahead. Yeah, I've been doing more fashion shows because. Like, I don't usually do events, but um, the fashion shows are a little more structured to where, like, the composition will be more uh, the same. consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the, the same shoot, yeah. lighting and everything. Yeah. But events, it's like chaos. Yeah, so yeah. I like the, like, structure. still working with people, but also having that structure in my. Mm -hmm. photography and then that leads to me working with the designers at those shows on more specific like my style fashion uh shoots oh, that's cool. yeah that's how you got that sweater i have mm -hmm. the yeah the I one you stole <laughs> <laughs> you said i could have it I so i took it yeah oh, is that what it's called slut yeah, bug. Slut yeah. Bug. slut bug yep yeah on the side says slut bug and then it has like a very um, risque <laughs> butterfly on the front of it. Yeah. It's How risque, risque can a yeah, butterfly yeah, yeah. be? Uh, it's on the oh, <laughs> my laptop's over there, but oh, it has okay. a logo. Like on as it. a butterfly. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> risque butterfly. <laughs> <It sucks>. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if you have kids, you gotta cover their eyes. Yeah, don't worry. I'll leave that at the house. Yeah, but. I'm actually doing like a final photo meetup with a pretty well-known model out there. We're teaming up and we're getting four designers and like a 10,000 square foot spot. That's so huge. Host, yeah. That's so big. Host it. Yeah. There's so, so many like, cool spots on the lot. Yeah, that's yeah. Like a fucking warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ. They have spots out there where it's like, it's literally like, it's like a, I forgot, it's like a photo room thing where it's like just yeah. a bunch of random stuff, cool little things, little neon lights here, there, there, yeah. different whole setups. You just go around to those yeah. different oh, spots. Oh, Kevin did that when he went mm -hmm. to LA, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. He did. With that Barbie girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did some cool, there's some cool stuff. You know that yeah. one, there's one where it's the books that are just like a, like, it looks like a library, but the books are like 
a display in a way that's like an oval where you can like take get on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, they have some like wild yeah. stuff out there. Yeah. Plus, just like you go to Malibu, or you go to there's so much like cool stuff, and then just like iconic Hollywood, LA spots. spots yeah, I loved it out there, but. Like I told you, the earthquakes. Yeah. Oh boy. You only, you only had yeah. one though, right? I've really? been through two. Two. But I slept through one. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> who cares? For how bad was it? It wasn't bad, but like, and what I, what felt reassuring was that like it wasn't bad, but like it was still being like people were freaking out, like dude, in the news and all that. It's like mm -hmm. earthquake, three point boom hits us, and then like felt it here, and people were still not freaking out, but like everyone was buzzing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, all right, because the people were just like. Then I would have been like, oh, where was the next one? Like the fact that they like, it felt like something. It was easy. Mm -hmm. Me and Devin were, we had like, you see how this is an L, it's not a, I mean, it's a fake L shaped desk. But oh like, God. imagine this L here and then the same desk on this side that way. Devin's oh computer God. was here, mine's like this. Okay. So mm -hmm. we would put our drinks in the middle mm -hmm. and they pass it to each other. Um, we're playing <laughs> games and he had a cat. Sometimes it would claw my uh, okay. chair. So I felt a little like shake and I just thought the cat was like clawing it and I still wasn't paying attention. It was just shaking. <laughs> and like 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 light lightly like just like a cat was like moving it and yeah. then all of a sudden i hear dev this starts to intense and then like as soon as i'm starting to like what this is and then devin's like that's an earthquake that's an earthquake i'm like and we're looking at each other now we're starting to rock and i had a speaker the speaker's rocking i'm just like we're looking at each other like because it's not you, you don't like it's not like so scary intense it's literally just like this mm -hmm. things aren't falling anywhere it was just like this mm -hmm. and like yeah. my speaker was kind of like wobbling a little bit and you don't want to be the guy like, ah! <laughs> like running out the room <laughs> so both of us are just looking at each other like who's gonna do like, that first <laughs> yeah, you're also seeing how much more intense this is about to get yeah because yeah, yeah. you're just like rocking it out you don't want to be like just out <laughs> and be like <laughs> and come back in like we good they do yeah. say it's better to be like in an open area, right? For I that. don't know. I don't no. think so. I think under I would. a table. Put or me something? in the, yeah. put me in the under, street, the middle of the street, on, under door hinges. Like that. you need something so that like stuff starts to collapse. I think the bathrooms yeah. is always like the ideal. Yeah. Tornadoes. If if it's good for tornadoes, it's gotta be good for everything. <laughs> it's good for tornadoes. The structure is good. Don't have windows, so yeah. you're like in a spot where you're not going to get sucked out. You I don't know because you remember that tornado be... that came over um, the uh, when he moved uh, Dennis's house, the next door neighbor, mm -hmm. and the tornado went right over it. There was one wall standing. It was the bathroom wall, and the toilet was still there. Because <laughs> why I didn't have a window, but everything body. was gone. Everything that's was that's gone. There was home. one wall that stuck yeah. together. But that's also a mobile home. But still, bathrooms are pretty good. <laughs> and then take up the diving board, you remember that? Yep. The diving board, uh, metal. The homegirl. <laughs> I thought that was what I thought that was the work she did. <laughs> <Get the metal. laughs> I don't want to say her name, but <laughs> I don't know who about. you don't remember? No. I know what you're talking about. Who, almost who spelt, the I, I literally board? almost spelt the name like there was a kid in here. And I could, like, this was, like, <laughs> like they're not going to be able to spell that out. <laughs> I almost spelt you're talking about the girl that broke the diving yes. board, right? Who broke the diving board? A heavy girl. Yes. M one of my exes. Friends. Okay, I think I need to come up. You got it. Mm -hmm. She broke it. Yeah, I'm making a joke because she didn't. Okay, she didn't good. do all didn't the bending up. of the yeah. metal. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't, it wasn't far from that. <laughs> Might have helped it out a little bit. All right, let's talk about Joe. Ask me swimming. Oh, I did. I did want to just give you props real quick. Like <laughs> way to stay consistent with it. That's Thank like the key, you. and you're always going at it. So good job, baby. Good job, baby. <laughs> Sir, Joe Oh my god. Yeah. Thank you. I haven't heard that in forever. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah, that's oh, a I'm never gonna let it die. That's no. <laughs> no, a good nickname. It is a good nickname. I like the nickname they have for Azula. What is it? I forget, but it's very close to Chilling Chain. I like, I like it, it, but you forgot it. No. <laughs> Amanda's had the Amanda had the worst. What was her? Shiki Pungi. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> even know that. I've Shiki never Shiki. heard that. Was it? Shiki 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 <laughs> something that makes sense but I don't it could have been mine too though but Shooky Pungi was I remember Amanda Amanda <laughs> randomly Amanda, Amanda oh. randomly came up and was like call me Titi and I'm like no I'm not calling you that <laughs> <laughs> oh, so shirt, hers was just so yeah. like cute yeah. I'm pretty sure I was shooting them everywhere. That looks like it makes sense for you. My favorite story is that Cassia uh, prayed for you to be pretty one day. Yeah, shut the <laughs> fuck up. Whatever. Yeah. I did this by myself. Jesus is God. She put like my fifth birthday. Please do okay. something for my sister. Please. <laughs> That's because, okay. My sister's out here scrubbing. No, I was only because mom gave me a haircut with kitchen scissors. 
So she took my hair in like a ponytail and just doop. That's when your mom had to come save me. <laughs> I was like, here. And then ever since I was like, I'm not about to be ugly because of her. So I got to do something. <laughs> Cassie swears that my glow up is because she wish had used her birthday wish on me. <laughs> oh, she is. She's saying that she put you. That was a birthday yeah. wish. That yeah, she's her birthday Aww, wish. On that's me. so cute, though. It's <laughs> cute, yeah, but it's that's Cassie. But it's funny. Sure. It's disrespectful, but it's disrespectful. Yeah, she, she, she kept it in. She didn't have to tell nobody. Wait, but she didn't say it till years later, right? I don't matter. Which is funny. She's been sitting on that thing, watching she you. Oh no, she's kind of cute. <laughs> it's just it's working. It's happening. I don't want to jinx it. Not gonna say it yet. Might yeah, reverse. I did it myself. That's hilarious, though. <laughs> I never knew that. I never heard. You that. never heard that story. No. Yeah. Yeah. She literally wished and prayed. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> that's I was rough looking. They thought my kids are cute because I was a little nervous. Because I always talk crap about people's ugly kids. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to get an ugly kid. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm going to get an ugly kid. And you don't know. And because when no one came like, out, he had a cone head. And I didn't know about it. And Kathy and Kevin was scared. And they didn't want to tell me. <laughs> so they just took a hat on him. Because the way it settled? Yeah. Oh, because of the way he came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a cone head. So Kathy and Kevin didn't want to tell me. And I'm over here thinking my baby's so cute. And oh, the the hat helped though for sure, and then like obviously when you have a baby you have to like mold the head and everything or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they didn't tell me, so I had no idea for like a, a long time that no one came out with a cone head. Cause I didn't see him when when I first had no one. I didn't get him. Um, I was like, I wanted to like pass out honestly, and I was too afraid to hold him because I was shaking. So I told them not to give him to me because I didn't want to drop him. Mm-hmm. And so Ryan took him. And um, I remember Kevin, te- Kevin told me once I got home, um, he had a cone head. And I was like, what do you mean he had a cone head? <laughs> but it settled by the like, time you saw him? Yeah. <clears throat> by the time I got to him, mm-hmm. yeah, he was fine. They were mm-hmm. like, girl. Got fun with that, yeah. <laughs> she will be happy, happy about this. this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to go back to my baby. I was so bad. I was like, why did you tell me? And I remember trying to get Devin to hold him. He was like, no. Nah. I'm not a big baby holder. Yeah, he was me like, neither. Yeah. He like, looked over at him. Cute. Good job. <laughs> if I'm hungover, I don't want to hold babies. I, 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 I don't feel, trust I myself, like, period. I feel like I want to lose yeah, them. <laughs> like, 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 if they can't hold their own neck, I don't want to hold it. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah, if it's not it. mine or like my. I hold it. I held Avery just because they like literally like put him in my yeah. lap. Yeah. And he was my brother. But like. He took a picture. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> by the, yeah, Avery's my brother, by the way. I want to like make sure people know what we're talking about. <laughs> But yeah, other, other people's kids, I don't want to hold them at all. Yeah, I brought yeah. Him I no one downstairs to him. We were outside, and he looked, he's like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> he's again. He's doing, like, you don't he's, doing, he's doing a breathing thing. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> so he's like, you did again. And I was like, okay, thank you. Right. Sorry. He lost no one back upstairs. He doesn't have a disease, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can hold him. <laughs> it's not fun holding the little tiny, tiny ones. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're just so yeah. fragile. But yeah, yeah I feel yeah. like, you're 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 on like you, alert yeah yeah you're like all right and i don't know what i'm doing i never like looked up how to hold a <laughs> yeah. newborn or anything so i'm just I like know what I'm doing. yeah you just hold the neck <laughs> yeah <laughs> hold and embrace that we're good the rest <laughs> it's like holding the kid <laughs> well Devin didn't like cats either so oh shit you gotta lose i like them now <laughs> yeah nah the dog or cat i probably still lean towards I dog like but i like question. i like them both yeah. I like I like cats because they're low maintenance and they're not like up your butt twenty four seven. I do get annoyed with my dogs just like always being right there, and I'm just like, get oh. out of my. But way. your dogs are also very like yeah t- yeah, yeah very butt. attached yeah. Because mm-hmm. there's other dogs who have to be a little more chill. Mm-hmm. Cats' dogs are really good. Quite a, yeah, there's a little Jesus. cat out there that every single time. I walk outside, me and Tannis walk outside, finds us. Oh. I'll sleep, I'll sleep by the car. It wants to come inside, like like uh is like go peek the time yeah. the door's <laughs> cracked <I'm> like, <laughs> like no he can't come in <laughs> well i love that cat it's a little white cat but every there time you go, go outside i go for cat. a run i'm waiting and like stretching cat comes up i'll come get the cat tell me i do call her it's one of these people i do think it's there's good. so many cats out here mm-hmm. it's gonna have cats around when like you have young kids because it does build if they have like an al- allergy to it it builds up their tolerance because mm-hmm. mm. Going to Haley's, I used to always, I was like super allergic to cats, but like going and having so much exposure to it, I feel like it's gotten like a lot less. Mm-hmm. But if you don't have that exposure, you're like sneezing yeah. 24-7 right, right away. Ever since I have no animal, I have an allergy to animals. 
It's really? just weird. Ever since I had normal. I Both? Like, yeah. Because uh, whether it's a dog or a cat, they just, their hair, specific hair, just messes with my nose. Uh, let's talk about jail. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's prison. Prison. Oh, I never been to prison, though. Yeah, it's prison. You're a correction officer for prison? Yeah, I'm in a women's prison. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I thought it was a joke. That's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I applied as a joke because I was looking for something to do because I was tired of going back and forth. But that to doesn't get a actually point. Like, this way. I was tired of going back and forth to get a Joe's, and um, you heard my story with BJ's. Yeah. <laughs> so that wasn't fun. I got Buffalo Wild Wings, but the hours and everything, only working weekends is is frustrating. I wanted to do something where no one will learn school, and I um, I would be working so that I could have the weekends. And so I saw it and I was like, why not? And they actually called me back. I had two. I had one up here and one in Ocala. And mm-hmm. I thought they were the same one when I had applied. Which one are you working at? <clears throat> in Ocala. Okay. But um Marion <clears throat> County's supposed to be pretty rough. Yeah, they don't care yeah, about I heard anything. <clears throat> so um not to get into like what the officers are doing. And there's a lot I'll of tell, I'll tell you my story so you don't incriminate nobody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You'll probably buy it, but you can finish what you're saying. But um, so there's a lot of men and women, but you need a lot of women, especially for confinement, because when an uh, inmate goes to confinement, which is like jail in prison, mm-hmm. um, they have to be strip searched before and after they go into their cell. Um, so to call men the can't box or the hole. Yeah, and men can't mm-hmm. be in there. I am not in on that compound, which the compound name is, I think, so stupid. We have three different compounds. The first compound is um. Where the inmates can come and go to work. It's like the the less of like the less. They're about to be on the way out. Uh, mm-hmm. It's called EOS. Mm-hmm. End of sentence or whatever. They yeah, can go. Relief. Yeah. So they can go work or whatever. The next compound is more so. Um, it's incentivized. So they have like beauty school. They have culinary. They have um, like little simulations of like working in construction. Stuff like that. So as long as they're good. They are able to do stuff. They also have jobs within um, like trustees. Chow. Do they call yeah. them tr- trustees. They in call there? them um, orderlies. Okay. So chow workers, um, yep. housemans that just clean the house all day, whatever. And then the other compound is where like the bad people are at, mm-hmm. and where you have two um, confinements. One is um, GP and like they did bad, but like they'll be out, and then confinement, confinement where they're gonna be in there for like thirty plus days. Like, they they do mm-hmm. something bad, and you're getting sprayed. Every other day because you don't know how to act. I'm in the compound that like is incentivized, so they do like they go to work, they go to school, all and that whatever. But when I tell you these inmates, they find stuff to do. Like, so I started off in my compound, but I didn't have an FTO to train me. So an FTO was like, "Come over to the other compound so I can train you." Right? This is when my hair was red. I come back when I tell you they knew that I had dyed my hair. They're like, oh, you just had red hair. You just dyed it. And I was like, how the fudge do y'all remember from seeing me for two days? <laughs> two days that I was with him. And then just see me in passing. We have YOs um, that are, um, I think, two 17-year-olds. And then what are YOs? Youth offenders. And then we have mm-hmm. YOs that are from 18 to 24 in one mm-hmm. area of a dorm. And then the other area is like the um, nursing home area. There's like really, really old people in there. What's we the also- youngest that they let in there? Um, so that I've seen, I'm not, I think it's like 16, but that I've right. seen is, uh, they were two 17 year olds. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have pregnant women. We have a lot of pregnant women. I think there's like 12 or 13 pregnant women in there. Um, which is actually really sad because mm-hmm. if they don't have family to come get the baby, they have to put the baby up for adoption. Mm-hmm. Um, but these inmates, like when I tell you, we caught a couple of smoking, we didn't see it, but you can smell it. By the time we get down there, you know, they run, they, whatever they use batteries and, um, you know, like wool, what's it called? Like a, mm-hmm. from sponges mm-hmm. to, as a lighter. And they'll smoke like tea bags. They'll smoke, they're um, inhaling. What they'll have, some people do is they'll have people send them um, uh, like letters. And then the letters is like bug spray. And they'll inhale the bug spray to get high. Like the nasty stuff. They make uh, toys <clears throat> out of gummy bears. They get gummy bears like with water and to get it hard. And put like a glove on it. What? Oh, like sex toys? Mm-hmm. Okay, now I know. 
I was about to say, yeah. I was thinking about Low Island. Like, what I know it's just boys do they yeah. 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 Or they'll they use gloves. Yeah. They'll use just straight up gloves and they'll like, because they have to use gloves to clean. But if they use gloves and immediately go back to their bed or their bunk or whatever, we have to like wind them up. You can't do that because that's what they'll use it for. They'll stuff gloves up and use like their underwear or something, like the liner, to tie it up to use. Mm. And we're supposed to confiscate that as contraband, confiscate it. And one of my uh, officers told me that there was like 15 on the floor. That he confiscated from different inmates. Jesus Christ. Just sweeping them all, <laughs> sweeping them all up. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I get it. It's just gross. Yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just gross. Yeah. I've seen so many gross stuff too. Yeah. There's, there's a lot. And this is like, yeah. I've only been there, like I said, yeah. for like three weeks. And yeah. I'm already seeing and the like. stories are probably endless. They're about. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God. And like, so I haven't had an issue with any of the inmates. A lot of the inmates that I've been around, they're really, really nice. A lot of the inmates I've been around um, are in there for something stupid like, um, we're not supposed to like look it up, but I've been told what they're in there for. There's this one girl who's in there for um, drunk driving, and she killed somebody. So she's in there for like um, That's not stupid though a year or two. But I mean, compared to like actual murderers, like have you guys ever yeah, seen? Yeah, I mean, the, the very anything in jail, I mean, in prison is a ye- over a year. Yeah. So if you get a sentence, if a, ju- if a judge wants to be a douche, a year and a day, a year and a day. Yep. Mm-hmm. That means instead of going doing your time in jail, you're mm-hmm. doing it in prison. You also have like some people have the option to do longer time in jail, shorter time in prison, right? I've never heard of that come up, I'm but not sure. yeah, I never heard that situation. I'm not saying that doesn't sound like it could, but no, that doesn't make sense. It's sentence comes down to sentence. But you know they also have tablets? They each have tablets. That probably depends on the prison though. <laughs> Every prison the warden's gonna do different. Well, the prison I'm at, each compound, they they each inmate has a tablet. Mm-hmm. And they can watch movies on it. They can, um, they go to the canteen. They can buy like Remy noodles. They can buy soda. Yeah. They can buy mm-hmm. like uh, Bath and Body Works uh, makeup and all that stuff. There's a lot of trading too with like canteens and betting and gambling and mm-hmm. like, what you can get. And if you don't make good on those bets, it's a problem. <laughs> it's a uh, problem. We had uh, one inmate. Um, I was just walking back from doing a pat search from the uh, control room, and I come back and they're like, "Hey, we have an emergency." Whatever, whatever we need, uh, like security nine or something to come up in the in the nurses because an inmate said that she slipped and fell and hit her eye on the sink, and um, the security nine shuts the door and he goes, "Did you guys hear any commotion?" I was like, "I wasn't in here. I don't know." He goes, "Well, she definitely got punched, so she didn't slip and fall nowhere. She got punched, but because there's no cameras in the bathroom and she's not willing to say anything, there's nothing they can they can do about it." Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and then like a lot of times. Um, if an MA like comes out like an officer, depending on like what to the extent, um, they'll just write it up as disorderly conduct because they don't want to do paperwork. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I had that happen to a, one of the uh, officers uh, this past weekend. She got locked in a bubble, the officer station, with three inmates. And they were throwing stuff at her. They were like coming at her. One of the inmates got in the way to block her, to protect her. Mm-hmm. And originally it was supposed to be an assault charge of battery. And he didn't want to do the paperwork. So he's like, just write it up as disorderly conduct. There's a lot of um, bad stuff in there, yeah. but they don't mess with me. They're they're actually really nice. If you don't, if you're not disrespectful to them and you're not like cursing at them, yelling yeah, at them, they like the cool. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not there to like I don't care what they did. I'm literally mm-hmm. there for one to make a paycheck, and because like you know I have to make sure that you guys are alive. You're not killing yourselves or somebody else. So and they've told me to my I've had so many women when I'm doing like count. Or going down doing a security check that come up to me and they're like, you know, thank you for not treating me like, you know, complete garbage, like mm-hmm. an actual human being. And it's actually really sad how mm-hmm. some of these men um, will either tre- um, use them for sex. And I'm talking about like officers. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. For that or just are downright disrespectful just mm-hmm. because they're inmates. And you could tell it's a lot of like um, people who got bullied in high school that now want to be like all big yeah. and bad. You type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. because half of them are fat as fudge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And like they couldn't outrun the damn inmate if like worse, it came down to it. Yeah. But you could tell that, oh, I got this badge. You gonna listen to me. And it's like, calm down. They got a little power trip. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, calm down. Like they're not even doing anything. Like they will ask for um, ibuprofen. Oh, I'm not right now. Mm-hmm. Well, like, why not? You were literally just mm-hmm. sitting there. Yeah. Give her the damn ibuprofen. You want to like you want her to raise hell for some ibuprofen or like pads and tampons. Mm-hmm. They don't want to. They'll they'll give them like two or three. And I'm like, just give her the pack. Like you have no mm-hmm. idea what mm-hmm. what that's like. And like, mm-hmm. oh, they don't need that much. And I'm like, how do you do you have a vagina? You mm-hmm. know how that's like. I was like, no, just give her the pack. 
mm-hmm. and they were like, no, they, they're inmates. They're in here for a reason. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how do you know that this thing can be you, your wife, your daughter, your, you know, your mom, it can be in here for something that they did. Mm-hmm. Doing some scrupulous mm-hmm. stuff. Not all of them are murderers. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> and every day I go in there, I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> every day. And like, I got a speeding ticket the other day on my way home and I have to report it. Really? I can get in trouble and get fired. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. And I'm like, for it's what? A ticket. What, it's what, what, what a ticket. What am I going to do next? What's my next move? Yeah. Uh, I'm like, it's a ticket. Think? My goodness. I was like, all right, well, I got a speeding ticket. You want to mm-hmm. know how much it is? Y'all finna pay for it? Like, that's what yeah. you want me to tell you? Because I will. <laughs> Y'all can go ahead I'll and start, pay for I'll it. I'll start making up speeding tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're pretty new still, but it is, like, surprising how far, like, just a little respect can go for them. Because they're yeah. so used to being treated like animals. Mm-hmm. That, like, if someone comes in that, like, treats them like a human. It's, like, a it's big actually, deal for them. Yeah, it's really oh, sad it's how many of them have come up to me and are, like, just, like, mm-hmm. thank you for yeah. not coming in, like, on your high horse. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And they call me Cruella de Vil because of my hair. Yeah. <laughs> Which <laughs> uh, I kind of expected, but the, <laughs> yeah, but they're they're so oh, nice. Oh yeah, and like, cause I'm like, ma'am, can you please or something? I'm not like, hey, yeah. inmate, like they want me to do. I'm not calling yeah. you that. Yeah, That's yeah. stupid. I can't call them like. Um, I'm not supposed yeah, to say yeah. like that girl over there. I have I have to say inmate in that mm-hmm. way. But and when I'm speaking to them, like I'm like, ma'am, do you mind or mm-hmm. you know? And they're super respectful. Are so you allowed to call them by name if you know them? I can call them by like their, their last name. I don't yeah, think I'm really supposed name. to call them by their name. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Keep the little you can't talk to them for more yeah. than like five minutes or they mm-hmm. think that you're having like a relationship with them. Mm-hmm. But like I've had them like just ask me like, oh, like about my hair mm-hmm. or um, what I used to do or stuff like that. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, I'm mm-hmm. not going to like disregard them. I'm not going to be rude. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell them like I have kids. I'm not going to tell them, you know, any of that stuff. But the one I did, I was a server. You're not never going to know where. Like I'm here now. So mm-hmm. they know my last name. Mm-hmm. It's not hard for them to find out, you know, what if they want to find out something, if they can. They got JPay, they got the phones all the time, they got their tablets. Mm-hmm. If they want to find out about me, they can find out about me. So, mm-hmm. it's not much of a secret, but I haven't had any issues. So, would you say you're liking it so far, like, as compared to, like, serving? Um, Well, it's way different. Yeah. So, yeah. serving serving just gets repetitive and boring. I mean, right, this is repetitive and boring. <laughs> this is repetitive and boring because there's a lot of paperwork. It's more paperwork than anything. Mm-hmm. I have to fill out a housing log. I have to fill out what it may got. This medicine, what it may got. That medicine. Right. They want mm-hmm. like sick calls. They want like grievances. They want these paperwork. So that's mainly what I'm doing. I'm literally just watching them in a bubble to make sure that they're alive. I go mm-hmm. out. I do a security check at the perimeter. You guys good? Nobody's bleeding. Nobody's beating each other up. I go back to the bubble. I sit in there. So it's boring in that aspect. I don't like how they treat people. How yeah. they treat the inmates. Mm-hmm. Your inmates, I get it. Some of them are a lot of women I've heard are in there for um, messing with children, and that obviously I don't agree with. Yeah. But I'm not gonna go like I'm not gonna look it up because then I'm going to treat them different. 100. Right. Yeah. You're gonna ask me for ibuprofen. You're not gonna get ibuprofen. Okay. Yeah. You did her deserve to rot in hell. Okay. Yeah, like. Yeah. So I can't like Is that's there a what lot they tell of prisoners you? are like that too though. Like they'll hear about like if you're like a pedophile or something, mm-hmm. they're, yeah. the prisoners are gonna like jump whoever's a pedophile yeah. a lot of the time. At well, least for like the male jails. The male, yeah. The so I don't know. I'm not sure because I haven't been or in like prisons, the com- my bad. I haven't been in the confinement area, so I don't know yeah. a lot of that. That my area, a lot of people are going to work, a lot of people are going to school. They're mm-hmm. wanting to become something when they come out. Yeah, yeah. So I don't really have. I haven't really had to deal with um, irate inmates. Mm-hmm. I did have an incident where an inmate pushed another inmate. Um, when was it? Yesterday, actually. Mm-hmm. And um, the inmate immediately ran up to us to tell to let us no because she's like I'm not about to fight her. She's like, um, I I don't want to do it. She's like, I'm too old for this. And it was over uh, a fan. It was so stupid. So we mm-hmm. had to take the and she was so upset. She was crying. The inmate. I felt so bad. And she was really nice. And so we took her out into the bubble, handcuffed her, brought the other lady out. And she's like, well, she butt me first and da 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 We looked at the camera. And when I tell you that inmate, like, almost slammed her down to the floor over turning off the fan, I mean hard. You're talking about the one that was crying to you? Yeah. She, yeah. The other inmate slammed her so hard. And I felt so bad because they didn't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. They said, don't touch her. Don't look at her. Go your separate ways. You good? You good? And that, hold on, hold on. The inmate, that, the inmate that came crying to you is the one that got slammed? Or yeah. the one? Yes, that got slammed. Yeah, yeah. So the you know security people who we had to call to investigate, look back at the cameras and everything, were like, 
don't mess with her, don't mess with her, y'all good? And she's like, well, what if I go to the bathroom and she's going to jump me yeah. or whatever? And he's like, well, they don't want me to do anything about it. And she's like hysterically crying, like legitimately afraid because their bunks are like catty corner like this. Yeah. That's how far they live from each other. And it's dark. It was like uh, 11.45 when this is happening, almost midnight. You can't see nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, granted, you can see on the camera yeah. that she got pushed. You but get your ass beat when, for a while before you yeah, show up. <laughs> when you're looking, like, what's going to happen? There's no cameras in the bathroom. So the inmate was like, I'm not comfortable and was vocalizing that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, there's nothing I can do. You're going to have to wait till next shift. And that was at, like, 1230. And I was like, you kidding me? Like, there's nothing we can do? Like, mm-hmm. and when we uncuffed the other inmate, she's smiling, running her mouth all the way back into the dorm. Like, why would you let that happen? You're literally saying we're supposed to protect and do all this for them. And then you're going to let her willingly run her mouth, walk out of here smiling like, ha ha, I just got out. Mm-hmm. Letting something happen to her. Obviously, something's going to happen to her. Yeah. Okay? So I waited um, until the other sergeant officer came in to let them know. And um, I pulled her to the side. I said, um, we were like, don't, me and the other officer were like, don't go to the bathroom by yourself. Make sure somebody's with you. And they were like, just... When the other officer and sergeant get here, we'll we'll let them know what happened, and that's what we did. But we had to leave. There was mm-hmm. nothing more we could do. So I literally don't even know what happened. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. just the distraught of her, and she told me what happened to her. She's in jail because, um, or in prison because she supposedly she um she's from Canada and she has a visa. So when she was here, uh, she was driving and uh, another car ran a red light and they collided and they died. And even though it was their fault, she didn't have a Florida driver's license. It was uh, Canada. So she got two eight-year sentences because of the people who died. Mm-hmm. That's why she's in prison. And then the other woman, I think, is in prison for murder. So you have, like, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. way different. Manslaughter and, and murder is a completely different thing. Yeah. Thing. And then, like, she, the whole Somebody thing. didn't, if. That story is legit because people yeah. will be lying. I'll tell you what. <laughs> well, or fudging you know, you a very to, important detail. You have to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, people but lie all the time. The whole situation was um, she wanted um, she wanted the fan off because she's sick and she had just got out of the shower. And the lady's like, the other inmate was like, well, I'm, I'm trying to dry my clothes. You're not supposed to dry your clothes in the fan anyways. So you're wrong mm-hmm. to begin with. And she's like, okay, well, I'll give you an hour. But, you know, mm-hmm. when it lights out, um, I want the fan off because I want to go to sleep and I'm cold. And mm-hmm. so that's how it popped off. She turned the fan off. The inmate came, I swore to God, running from her bunk to shove this other inmate. And the inmate mm-hmm. immediately ran up to the bubble to let us know. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't do anything about it. He saw, the, the guy saw the whole thing. He's yeah, like, they get desensitized because it's just day after yeah. day mm-hmm. after day of shit. Yeah, bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. But like you, she, she's. I mean, you're crying right. In front you're of right for this. sure. You're right. And um, that's why. That's why I'm just kind of like, I don't know because like I'm. I was like, I can't. Or they're assholes. You know, I don't know if I can handle <laughs> like people being mean to them like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know if I can handle the. It's just a lot. The and it's never gonna stop. That. So, it's so just that's why like, it's a lot. That job is a lot. Yeah. So it's just, um, and I have like a couple months because once I start the academy of like the. The training for the guns and the dis- defensive tactics and everything, I have to finish out two years. Mm-hmm. Because if I quit or resign before then, I have to pay them back like $6,000. So I have yeah. until March to figure out if I want to do it or not. Yeah. Which is good. It's a good amount of time. Yeah. But like right now, when I'm on the floor with the inmates, I literally only have a radio and a, a personal body alarm. Mm-hmm. I don't have no spray. I don't have no handcuffs. I don't have none of that. Yeah. I'm literally on the floor with these inmates with a radio and an alarm. Do yeah. they make shanks there? Have you seen them make shanks there? No, but a lot of inmates, what they do is they'll take the razor blades from the um, razors that we give them and they'll hide it in their cheeks. Yeah. There's a whole yeah. so many. Like when I when I was in jail, I went to, uh, I talked to a, uh, some people who went from prison. I always like pick their brain if you have nothing but nothing to do. And there was a guy in there who did a 20 year prison sentence. He went in, was it 20? He went in when he was like 19. It was a 10 year prison sentence. Uh, he went in when he was 19. He was 29 when I met him. And he was like mm-hmm. right next to me in the bunk. This is like in pod. So it's like, imagine like <clears throat> just like a, a big ass room and on the edges of it, not the whole edges, but the far edges, there's two floors, beds in the bottom, all bunk beds all lined up. And then there's beds up top and the middle is like where the TV is and like uh, benches. And then there's like, you can find either like books to read or whatever, watch TV. Or you could walk out the side if it's rec time, then you can go play basketball or something like that. Little basketball hoops or people who just sit there, whatever. Um, 
So, but he was one of my bunk bunk mates, and he just did like a um, a long prison sentence. So I was t- asking him all this shit about prison, mm-hmm. and um, uh, what led me on here? Were we- oh, he he was saying what they would do. One of the craziest <laughs> things, like so, they'll take like you know, toothbrushes or something, and then they'll shave it down, Scar- like, and they'll stick it yeah. in the dirt somewhere, but they know where it is. Mm-hmm. So if they ever need it, they go back and they'll come back in the grass and pull it out. He said another thing they would do is they will let it rust. I don't know if this is what it would do with the toothbrushes <clears throat> or of a different version, but they'll let it rust, but they'll, put, they'll dip it in coffee. Oh, wow. And mm-hmm. to get the caffeine in it. So when they cut you, the caffeine comes in. The idea is for you to bleed out faster. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Because it raises your yeah. heart rate. See, I think that's the other compound. <laughs> like crazy. That like we crazy have. Crazy stories. Mexicans got on boots. <laughs> like that. <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah, of I know like, about. the inmates on my compound, they don't want to lose their um, privileges. Yeah. So they're they try their best to be like yeah. on their like best behavior because they the get out early. Compound, they they just be wild. Yeah, from what yeah. I hear. Yeah, it's I've heard so many stories, crazy stuff like the way they would do tattoo. They would melt down chest pieces and use that as the ink. Oh really? They would take um they would take uh if they had a magazine you know those little magazines that have the, like the um the fragrance mm-hmm. and that little flip they would drip mm-hmm. it down with like water or something put it into a bottle and capture the fragrance and like make cologne and make yeah, stuff um, like that. Yeah, I had a lady who puts flowers in her soap mm-hmm. um to make it smell better. Yeah, like they're yeah, just they coming just up like with all little, these ideas. This little thing of like fragrance free soap, and mm-hmm. they give you like two rolls of toilet paper, mm-hmm. a toothbrush, a t- um, toothpaste. Um, and that's like once every Wednesday. So if you run out, if we have extra, we can give you more. But if not, like there's nothing we can do. Yeah. You're screwed. Especially, mm-hmm. and it, I, it's a little effed up because like women, I feel like you guys need, they need toilet paper. They're, you know, monthlies mm-hmm. and everything. And they're like, there's literally nothing we can do. And I'm like, okay, we well, can't get paper towels. Like that's how desperate they get yeah. sometimes. Yeah, that's messed up. <clears throat> and I'm like, oh my God. It's dark in there, man. I made popcorn the other day. Like we have microwaves and like little fridges. I made popcorn and one of the inmates was like, I haven't had popcorn in six years. And I was like, oh, fudge. I was like, Damn, I'm going to keep eating it, but I'm sorry. I just be walking around, so I accidentally eat popcorn sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to keep eating it, but I'm sorry. So and There was one dude who was in there. He was in jail for some like weed stuff, but he just got out of a 20-year prison sentence. Damn. And he was, he was talking to everybody in the corner, and they were talking about what he did or whatever. And he... Uh, his girlfriend brought a bunch of people back because he's like selling drugs and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And they uh, they brought it. He, she came over there to rob him with some other guys, and then they robbed him. And uh, they um, what was it? Oh, they were they, he. They were like making him show. They had their weapons and everything. And they were making him show where the where the money was, and it's mm-hmm. in a vault behind this like picture frame or something. So he's like telling them, and it's like it's, it's in there. He knows he has a gun in the far far back of it. So what he did is he said he grabbed, went inside, scooped out all the money on the floor, and all they're doing is grabbing it, grabbing it. He knows he has a gun on the far end, and he grabs it, and he kills all of them. Oh, my gosh. And he tried to kill her, but the, she was, he was out of bullets right at, right when he was, he was trying to kill her. Oh, He's like, I just went, pop, 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 To get all the money for himself? No, 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 no. He's the guy who they were robbing. So they were robbing him. Oh, okay. okay. But he yeah. knew he had a, the gun in the back of the safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what he did is took all the money and just slid it out on the floor. Like he just scooped it all out. Like here, have it. Yeah. yeah. And then they're all like scooping up the money, grabbing the money. He knows there's a gun in there in the back. Mm-hmm. So he grabs the gun. They're all not even paying attention. He gets it and starts popping all of them. Oh my and he goodness. killed, I don't know how many there were, but he killed, let's say more than, it sounded like there was like at least somewhere between three and five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Killed all of them. Tried to kill her, um, but uh, he said he said I went for her too, and I was like, didn't have oh, any wow. bullets. And then he gets twenty years, Damn. but like because it was like drug, they were robbing him, a drug thing, mm-hmm. whatever. He killed him, self defense ish. Gray line there. There's a woman who's in um, prison. I don't know for how long, but for a lengthy amount of time, because she um, walked in and her dad sexually abusing her her kid, and uh, she beat him to death. And so she's serving like 20 plus years, I think, in it. And I'm Jesus. like, at that point, like, yeah. why would you put her behind bars? Because he was in the wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, who wouldn't? I would say three years. Yeah. Like, who wouldn't do that for their kid? Three. Yeah. Because everybody would say they would do that. That's the first thing out of everyone's mouth. Even the judge's mouth. Yeah. Ask so the judge, like, what would you do? Mm-hmm. I'd fucking strangle him to death. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why am I here then? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just a lot so far. I mean, so, I get that law. It's whatever the but like it's not prove, yeah. Really. yeah. 
And most people just get in public defenders and mm-hmm. yeah. they're trying to get as much money out of whatever. Mm-hmm. I remember one dude used to draw pictures of like nudes for people to jack off to. Oh, yeah. it's a very theoretical. And the guy, who, this is real yeah. though, this is real. Yeah. And then one guy, and that same guy actually, got caught jacking off. And all the nurses that would come in were all the girls. We rarely ever see girls too often. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we would see the girls, um, there were all the nurses that would come out, hand out the medicine, and then leave. But like he was, he would draw some of them. Once, oh, one this after he got busted and he got taken out. Um, but he was in the bench in the middle while people were watching TV. Like we're all like not everyone. Some people are in their bunks. Some people are over there. But there's a lot. It's, it's like during like time the recess kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's sitting there under the bench, jacking off to the nurse. Ew. Under the bench, just like <laughs> jacking <laughs> off. He gets caught. He gets pulled out. <laughs> and then uh, some other guy was like. Yesterday, he drew a picture of that nurse. <laughs> uh, and it was showing me, like, yo, look at that. Look at that. That's her. It's like a oh nude gosh. photo or whatever. I don't know. I want to see. I wanted to see it, see how good it was. How bad it was. <laughs> but he was, like, already kind of, like, in his brain fantasizing. Yo, yeah. he showed me a picture of him drawing, like, the nurse oh right gosh. there. Mm-hmm. Big lady, too. Like, <laughs> it was great. I saw one. Um, some dude got in trouble. I feel like he should have gotten in trouble for this but like they're real strict on like just like your food amount or whatever like if you barter with somebody people give you food okay but like if it's not food time mm-hmm. it's not food time mm-hmm. and like he took a pe- he he grabbed a piece of chicken that somebody threw in the trash he pulled it out and ate it Oof. like after mm-hmm. later he saw it and this is after yeah. food yeah. And he grabbed it pulled it out ate it I'm like, look, that's his punishment. <laughs> like, let the guy go. And he got in trouble yeah. for that. They, I think they took him to a different cell, maybe put him in the hole or something. Yeah. Like, wow. They get mad at you for stupid For stuff. like, I'm like, look, like, he's eating trash out of the those, big those, pot. Those, like, those, what are those, we doing? Those like, I bored all their lives yeah. and I got yeah, a little yeah. power. Yeah. So they want to like, like my man's eating up the together. trash. Yeah. <laughs> like, there is, um, let him. Whatever. There. Even if you don't let him, like, just... Yeah. Don't get that mad. Don't put him in the box for that. You have yeah. a sergeant and he called for chow. Everybody line up. You have to be in your blue uniform, tucked shirt tucked in, socks on, whatever, whatever. Um, I guess this one inmate like was in the bathroom or something and he like shut the door and she didn't make it. And there was like a couple that didn't make it. And so they're like, Hey, can you open the door for us? And I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to. I said, Let me just go talk to him. So I was like, Hey, there's a couple inmates that, you know, missed the door. Can I open it? He's like, No. He's yeah, like, I called the for worst. it. And I was like, you're not going to go let them eat? I was like, it yeah. was like literally their dinner time. If you miss dinner eat. or food or whatever, yeah. they don't And care. I was like, are you kidding me? I remember, like, and it's precious because you only get so much and the food's trash. And it feels like yeah. plastic. It's gross. But if if you're and not like, up and you're not in line by the time, there's no, even if it's right there and you're about to pack it up, you already packed it up. You're like, mm-hmm. you don't want to miss. Yeah. So inmates will help other inmates like and wake everybody up. Because they know, because people are still sleeping. Like, they turn yeah. the lights on and everybody gets up. But people will be like, yo, it's chow time. It's whatever. Yeah. And everybody wakes everybody up because they know. And I was like, you like, can't just open the door for them? Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, they missed it. And I'm like, they're literally not going to eat until, like, the next morning. Mm-hmm. And oh, when I tell you, they were mad. And I was like, and I felt so bad. I was like, let me just open the door. Like, I'm right here. Mm-hmm. All I have to do is turn it off. The door opens. Yeah. And he's like, no, they missed it. I already called it. And I'm like, but they either didn't hear you or they were peeing. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's not that serious. It's, yeah, they're so, they're so ridiculous. And I was like, yeah. And I told him, I was like, there's literally nothing I can do. I can't go against what the sergeant says yeah. at that point. So they're like, no, it's not on you. But like, th- that's when they can grieve. Yeah, I'd be pissed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, was, I felt bad for them. And like, but there's like, yeah. Our whole system doesn't like. There's no like rehabilitation going on yeah. at all. It's Not like it's a all. digression. Like yeah. if you come yeah, out on top, yeah, yeah, you're like lucky if you come out on top. You gotta like really push to come out on top. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. it's just like you're you don't have any experience. You're wait. You're wasting all these years in jail or prison. Mm-hmm. And it goes by slow. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I have never done, thank God. So, you know, I'm not on cardboard. Uh, <laughs> I've never done some like serious time, but like, I can only imagine that I, it's, it's hard to get through a day. Mm-hmm. And it's, and I, I was, I had to work one time because at one point I had to do weekend, like one of my stays, <laughs> I had to do um, weekend jail. Mm-hmm. So I, I go in for like a, a stretch of like three days. It was like two days of spanning three, two, 48 hours, mm-hmm. which would span mm-hmm. three days. Um, but like just waiting in the time, you look at the clock, you're like, it's been 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like it's rough in there. And they there. can't nap. They're not supposed to nap. They're supposed to be up and moving. And oh, we can something. nap all day. 
No, they don't want them to nap. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you want them to do to pass time? Yeah. That's how I fights happen. therapy. That's why they do drugs. Just like in a meditative state. <laughs> just trying to Like, yo, you want them to friends. not they do anything, no friends. but you can't even let them go to sleep? Yeah, they should be able to sleep whenever they want. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, people would just stay It's asleep. a lot that I've noticed. Reading books. It's not good. Yeah, they read, they read yeah, a lot. I read so many books. And then, I would, yeah, I would just sleep and work out. I would yeah. work out. Read books. People try to talk to me. I would, I'd just say whatever, but like I would no, no ain't no friends. Yeah. Because like I don't know who doesn't like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want to be associated with you. <laughs> and it's not prison because like, you hear the whole culture in prison. It seems like you have yeah, to align. Just stick with your it's not race. like that, and yeah. mm-hmm. that I've experienced. It's not like that where I've been anyway. Mm-hmm. It was just mainly like if I stick to myself, I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be any friends. I remember the, one of the times I was like playing basketball and like I was starting to get like. Like no one's like yo, he's like he's here or whatever. I was like then the next time I went, I'm like I don't even want to be known at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't want to be. He's, I want to be just the guy who just happens to be here. <laughs> like, I don't want to be. Nobody recognize me. Nobody, yeah, yeah. nothing. I don't want no eyes on me. Nothing. I'm just gonna get in. I'm gonna get out. And that's it. I'm gonna come back in a, next week. <laughs> Let's come see how y'all doing. That's where you did most of your reading, though, right? Like when you were actually in jail? Like, cracking up. Open books and stuff. Oh yeah, I was crying. I was oh, yeah, whatever you can. And sometimes because I had to work, right? So I would go to different pods, and I'd be I've been all over the jail, and to like the high, like the max, um, uh, people who are about who've done murders and stuff like mm-hmm. that were waiting to be able to go to uh what jail. But the dude that I went through, like you'll be in, I was in like G pod, which is which is like uh not the like, not the like uh really violent people, mm-hmm. but uh they're violent. And they've had violent charges, but not mm-hmm. that current charge. Like the guy that told you was in G Pod with me, mm-hmm. he killed those people right mm-hmm. there. The other guy yeah. that I went in there, they all came out of prison. This is just they're now in jail for like a weed charge or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they do like a little eval in the beginning when you first come in. Mm-hmm. And they kind of decide which pod they're gonna put you in. Mm-hmm. And I've been, I've, I've worked in the psych ward before. The psych ward's crazy, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. dude. I've seen some shit where I'm like, I, there's no way you cannot be locked up. <laughs> like a lot of people like some people a lot of people are cool a lot of people are cool and just like chill and just like living life and trying to stick to themselves everyone's in the, sh- in the shithole like because in jail people are, a lot of people are, are waiting their charges are coming up so everyone's like in their head about shit they're not mm-hmm. like all right i've been here for like two years this, i know how i'm already sentenced a lot of people are just waiting and they're like depressed and sad and all yeah. that kind of stuff and uh but like a lot of them are like oh he's a good guy he just fucked up here and there whatever but then when you go to psych some of the psych ward people you're like I don't even know how you ever walked the streets. <laughs> like there was one dude who was screaming so much and and he starts shadow boxing the, the window. And like see has let it off for a while. And he's <laughs> and they're getting punched in the glass and he wouldn't stop. He wouldn't stop. So then they strapped him down to the chair. And he was in the chair and then you see you see him through the glass. He's like, ah, ah, ah for 30 minutes straight, probably. I mean, just he's screaming loud. They were like looking at each other, like, we need to stop. Like, his he's, his heart's gonna burst. They, they, we yeah. can't let this keep going. Like, he's whatever. So they tranquilized him. Oh, wow. They, they had to sedate him. Let's put yeah. it that yeah, way. Yeah. They sedated him with something. <laughs> he strapped in and then he started to melt out. <laughs> but they, this guy, like, they tried to do it for him because he just would not stop. Yeah. It was so loud. But I remember him shouting the box. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> punched him in the glass. First, it started off the shadow boxing. Uh-huh. And looking at like a particular CEO, like, yeah. <laughs> and then he started connecting with the glass. And as soon as like the little connects, uh-huh. then it was bang, 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 yeah. bang. Oh was going God. for it. Out. I could, I, I was, I was not that close. Yeah. I just, so I couldn't see what was happening. I knew yeah. what happened. Yeah. And then, and I'd have to like mop by his room. <laughs> and then you sit fucking start, ah! <laughs> yeah. He was losing his shit. Oh my God. And cleaning people. And then max security area there was one time so they had to they go they open that's when there's no like there's no like general pop they let a cell out at a, out of time and these two people can walk around for a little bit mm-hmm. and they got to go back in so they they were going the cops were going door by door for cleaning or no inspection so they're inspecting everybody's cell they let so two at a time they go out they have multiple officers there and then one will go in inspect everything lift up the bunks make sure they're not holding any contraband mm-hmm. stuff like that um uh, i'm watching because i'm i i'm clean i'm like a and it would be so boring. I'd be sit. You have to work for eight hours. Majority of the time, I'm sitting on a bench for eight hours in front of the cops, just sitting here until they need me to mock. Can you go grab that? Mm-hmm. Can you go grab this? But majority is sitting here, just finding a book. And the best book one time was an encyclopedia. 
<laughs> and I'm just like looking at random shit. Talk about time going by It was slow. the worst, yeah, dude. But anyway, this particular time, they go up to the cell. The, the guys come out. As soon as they come out, there's three cops over there. As soon as the guys come out, one guy turns around and clocks them and punches them. Damn, they weren't cuffed? No. Oh. So they got out and uh, and he did it in front of the cops because he wanted to get moved. He didn't want to be in that cell with him anymore. So he wanted to get moved. Yeah. And he that's why he waited for the cops to come. He wasn't making a fight over it. He was just showing like aggression to that. So they had to move and separate them from the uh, thing. And that was it. The other guy had no idea what anything was coming. <laughs> like, he was just, he just walk out. Boom. Like, what? In front of the cops where you think you're safe, there's yeah. three cops. One inspecting, two right here. And he gets caught. I saw it all happen. And they like restrain him. They didn't even really need to restrain him because he only did that. And that was it. He wasn't trying to get at him. He just, boom. And you're like holding him. He's like, all right. Because that's what he wanted. He wanted to get out yeah. of there. Yeah, yeah. So the other guy just got fucking dead for no reason. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. In there. I hate it. I hate every last bit of it. I get night, I get nightmares. I had a nightmare. There's I like a... drank and drove and I had to get. I got pulled over and go to jail. I'm like, fuck. Oh, how long? How long is this one? I do think there's value in seeing that type of crazy because I feel like in like everyday society we forget how crazy people can be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you forget how crazy people can be, you get a little too cocky and you you like you can try a certain person a little bit too much. And it's mm-hmm. like you don't know how crazy this guy can get. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. This guy can go to a whole nother level that you're not ready to go. Yeah. And, this, and it can it can turn out with you dying. Yeah. So it's <laughs> and to speak on that. That's what's kind of nice about living in a city though. You see that crazy, but you don't have to go yeah, to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That crazy is everywhere. Yeah, that crazy is everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. So you're like, okay. But I'm telling you, <laughs> it's there. <laughs> some of the crazies I saw in there, yeah. they they could they just wouldn't be allowed in society. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much, and not in the general population area, but in the psych wards and things like yeah. that. Those guys, you can't. I don't know how that functions mm-hmm. in society. He has to be here. That's the only time I've seen people like. I don't know. I did like that. I would I had no, no, nothing but time to think. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking about him, like him a lot. I'm like, mm-hmm. how do you get him better? <laughs> like, how he is? He's off of it. He's not normal. Yeah. He's yeah. off, and uh-huh. he's so crazy that like, I, if you let him in the street right now, problems are gonna <laughs> happen. Problems. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how he yeah. was out there to begin with. Like, yeah, yeah. The trouble it's with, crazy. The trouble with our system right now is that we group those people with people that could be rehabilitated. Mm-hmm. and it just like drags people that could possibly have like a future and get rehabilitated down into that because you don't really have you have to like you have to survive right so mm-hmm. you got to kind of form yeah. to your surrounding yeah and you gotta get so, dark in there yeah yeah i never had to but like when you hear the prison stories yeah prison yeah. and i've heard from firsthand accounts on what stuff goes on the one dude that i was like cool so and this happened multiple times where they're so fucking cool. Where I, I liked them a lot. Like, we were boys. Mm-hmm. But it's one day something would snap. Mm-hmm. And you would see him. And he's always the prison guys that get whole, have done, like, long sentences. And it's happened multiple, multiple times. And mm-hmm. some of my favorite people, they were so cool. We would talk all the time. We would hang out. Mm-hmm. And then what I think is sometimes in jail, they disrespect. They got less freedoms in, yeah. like, jail. It gets less like, so structured, blah, blah, blah. And they, I think they see it as, like, kids play. I'm in jail. I, I was. I did ten years in prison, where yeah. like real motherfuckers are and shit like that. Yeah. And they got all these little kids and shit like that. I'm here with this, and they, and they don't have the way. They have way less freedom. Mm-hmm. So now that I think that the, that pisses them off because you always hear them say, "I'm yeah. these fucking jits over here." Like <laughs> you hear, like you'll hear, like they get pissed, but they'll snap and they'll mm-hmm. fucking hold court out there. I remember mm-hmm. one snapping on all the CEOs. It was my, like my boy, and I, I'm always trying to tell him like. I'm like, oh, he ain't hearing me. <laughs> he ain't hearing me. Yeah. He's in his own shit. I'm gonna let that run ride. Yeah. And he was fucking. He was like walking around, like just like he was just screaming, screaming. Yeah. Lost his shit. And I'm like, I see why he went to prison. Yeah. <laughs> I see it now. I see it. Yeah, Before yeah. I was like, it was yeah, so fucking yeah. cool. And now I see it. Now I see it. But the same thing happened to the dude who shot everybody. Mm-hmm. Like so cool really funny i love sitting in my bunk near him because he would just like we'd sit there in our bunks and like anything that could pass the time fast he was hilarious his stories mm-hmm. were hilarious everything it was so funny and then just one day he got a call that pissed him off <laughs> and then he walks out of the call booth and he's flipping he just snapped and mm-hmm. just, and everybody knows it and everyone's just like watching it 
Uh-huh. I saw another dude who fucking got pissed. I remember one time I was talking to this guy. He was always talking to me. And I didn't want to talk to him that much because I was trying to be like mm-hmm. not associated yeah. with people. Mm-hmm. And he just always come up. I'd be on the basketball court or just like, and normally I would not, I would never play basketball with anybody because I didn't want to foul anybody. I wouldn't nobody mm-hmm. foul me. And then yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't want to get into this. Mm-hmm. So I would just like shoot. But when it was time, whatever. We're sitting there. I'm talking to him. I want to stand up. The fucking camera's going to lose me. But we're sitting there talking right under the hoop. So we're trying to like move. And there's some like little skinny little white boy sitting there like is, is shooting. Right. And uh, we're like uh, moving around. I'm trying to move around because like the guy's like shooting. We're sitting there. Yeah. But he keeps talking to me. And he's always been cool. Really cool. And the guy the, the guy shoots, hits the ball, hits the, the net, and it hits him in the head. Oof. Lost it. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah. And then he's like, the fuck what you want? What the fuck am I yeah. I'm thinking, I'm like, we're the ones under the hoop. <laughs> he's yeah, playing yeah. basketball. We're right yeah. under the net. Yeah, yeah. And he's shooting. <laughs> we could have we could talk somewhere else. That's on us. <laughs> That's on us, baby. And he lost it. Tried to fight him. And then some like Spanish dude got up and like because he was like real weak and there or whatever. And like I am in weak. I'm not defending nobody. Yeah. I'm defending nobody. I'm not yeah. saying nothing. I'm sorry, brother. You got to take that out. <laughs> I'm out of here in two hours. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I can't. I can't get involved. Yeah. But then some Spanish dude gets up and then he tells him, like, you're the, he's like, you guys are under the fuck. Oh, no, I forgot what he's, He didn't even say. He's like, he's like, he's like, he didn't do it on purpose. Mm-hmm. He's like a real skinny kid, frail. Mm-hmm. Like, he was, he was so scared. Oh. Yeah. I was like a black dude that I was talking to. He wasn't even big, but way bigger than him. Yeah. He was like, yeah. really abnormally skinny and like older, like maybe like yeah. 43 or something yeah. like that. And so it was like matured. He was really, yeah. 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 And then this guy was going in on him and like trying to square up and shit. Mm-hmm. And then, the, but then the Spanish dude came up and then got and like defended him. And he's like, let's fucking go. We can go right here, motherfucker. Let's go. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go inside. I'm out <laughs> yeah. two hours. I don't wanna be associated with this. It was literally two hours. So you got out. Yeah. 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 Well, I was on weekend jail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like, yeah. I was, oh, I was, okay. I was coming so up was in, when you're for my week. Yeah. So yeah. that week, mm-hmm. it was like, I was up in two hours. But I'm sorry, but I can't protect you. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Anyway. I couldn't even try. I saw it yeah. snap. There was a reason it wasn't going to work. Yeah. 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 You needed the guy to like actually stand up and be like, look, yeah. you have to did fight you... me now, not him, yeah. if you're going to yeah. do that. But the guy you... did stand up for him. Have you specified why you were in week in jail yet? Because I don't know if you specified the Why? Yeah. Like, do you want to say why? I can say it. Yeah, I, I, I was a DUI. Um, and... Uh, my lawyer just was able to work out a deal where I got we I did I did Only thirty weekends. days in done uh, weekend intervals. Yeah. So it, it, it post you. it passed it through a bunch. I appreciate you when we went to the jailhouse when it was me, mom, and Cassia, and you have a um, picture of me. Yeah, and you in the jail like this. <laughs> you waited for like your stuff to get your stuff back or something oh like that. My God. I think you like wrecked your car, your silver one, and you're sitting mm. like this. I mean, like, that's how yeah, that's how I would everything. be. Yeah, I can't even. I took this picture to remind you never to um never do it again. Me too. Me too. Yeah. 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 Jail's jail is by far the fucking. Whatever. Worst, yeah. yeah there you go. Like, that's my favorite, actually. Thank you. Yeah. But I've been there enough where I'm not scared mm-hmm. to go. Like I, I don't fear for myself. I know. I feel like I, I know how to navigate mm-hmm. my way around. But it's just so boring. You don't know how long you're gonna be there. It's the worst. Yeah, it's yeah. depressing. Everything's going on. Do we get the food you got to eat? The people you got to be around. Yeah. And then the CEOs are dicks. I mean, yeah. it's time oh, taken dicks. away from your life too. Yeah. It's so, like yeah. years. Like, like time is valuable. Yeah. So you're sitting you don't want to dicking be... around with these assholes. <laughs> yeah. just, just... Oh, one guy got in trouble. Here's another thing. This guy got in trouble because he pissed in a in a water glass and he was drinking it. Ew. And he got taken out of the cell. Yeah, he was drinking his own pee. And he was one of those little, like, dweeby-looking little yeah. skinny little yeah, shits yeah. with, bla- like, big bifocal glasses. Yeah. He was drinking his own pee. That's disgusting. So you got in trouble for that? <laughs> Just for you get in trouble for hurting yeah. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's weird. Like, you get in trouble for all that shit. I remember him drinking pee. Everybody was like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> but people were drinking and bringing in drugs. I saw yeah. people doing, um, uh, they were, because jail's a lot of in and outs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they have weekenders and stuff like that. Um... And uh, yeah, drugs. I they were smoking weed, and everybody was getting pissed at them because if you if they get caught, they'll they'll punish the whole the, everybody. We'll mm-hmm. lose our rec time. We'll lose whatever. So everybody's yeah. like, "Yo, whoever's fucking doing that, everybody not trying to be low or like boulevard." I'm like, yeah. "Yo, who the fuck's doing that? Stop that shit!" Yeah. Because everyone's gonna get in trouble. It's like if I get down there, I find out who the fuck it is. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then people were bringing pills, and they were gambling with pill like pills. So you, cards you, and, you yeah. didn't find that it was very race oriented when you went in jail. 
You didn't, oh, you I didn't see that? No. No, that's why so I'm that's scared more of a prison, prison thing. Yeah, prison. I've seen, but if you watch 60 Days or something, or 60 Days, in, I, I don't yeah, even watch stuff like that because it, yeah, yeah. it triggers it too much. And I hate those memories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't watch anything jail. I don't watch anything. I My hate dad it. hates I hate, it, too. I hate it. Yeah. My dad hates it, too. It does? Yeah. It makes sense. It's the worst. It's yeah. the worst thing to My dad has. And my dad has had very, like, a very, I know he told me one story about a very scary situation. There was, like, an older black guy that he was, he was big. He just came like right up to his bunk mm-hmm. and started screaming at him. And he had like a shank. And like oh, my dad was on the top bunk bed. Mm-hmm. And I like jumped up to like stand on the top bunk bed. And he was just standing there and just let the guy like the guy was going off, right? Mm-hmm. So I just let the guy go off, but he was just like not saying anything, just waiting for him to like get done with what he was saying. And then luckily he walked off. Mm-hmm. But the whole time the guy had like a shank in his hand. Oh. Oh my so gosh. my dad was Mm-hmm. But I was like, what, like 17, 18 at that time. Yeah. So he was, that like freaked him out. Yeah. He said, no, I was like, that's do expensive. <laughs> <That'll do it. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that, but. Mm-hmm. You know how my dad can be though. He probably like said something to him and then like that sparked that whole <laughs> Maybe, situation. but honestly, at the end of the day, it comes out of nowhere. Like, like the yeah, kid yeah, who yeah. just. He didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. I've seen people get pissed. Off. Like the other guy who got punched when he, he just wanted to get out of the block with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like who knows what he did. Maybe he wasn't the fucking. I've watched. Whatever, but. I've watched videos and it's like it's like literally like middle school, but like grown men. Yeah. And they just get dumb over the dumbest yeah. shit. Because like you're, they, angry. Oh, yeah. you're angry. You're yeah, angry. Sure. You're sad. You're depressed. It's yeah. a different thing. And then people your your layer of like tolerance is so much lower mm-hmm. for bullshit, especially if you got to be there for a long time and you know mm-hmm. how long you're there. You don't have tolerance for people's shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So little things are going to set you off. Like that whole little fan situation. Mm-hmm. That bitch is mm-hmm. depressed, sad, mad, looking for a reason. Mm-hmm. You yeah. touch that fan, watch what's going to happen. She was waiting. <laughs> she was waiting the whole time. Yeah. You could tell the yeah, second. She was waiting. The second she came from the fan back to her bed, the other inmate r- like ran to her. Yeah. Just to shove her. But that's yeah. that kind of shit. I remember people fighting. and It takes sometimes. It takes a while. Yes. I remember two people that were like, they were both. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember. I remember that. Like, you can tell he's like, I'm like, why do I do this? I'm like, what I could, I could, I could, <laughs> what, what I do? I can sympathize. Why do I keep that. doing it? <laughs> I got stuff. I, hey, I, you had your head up. My head would have been like down here. Uh, it was yeah. there. Yeah, he was there like, he was like, you can tell he's like, what the fudge am I doing? Yeah. This is March 4th. 2017. Oh, yeah. That's after that. That's when I went to the longer step. It's like this. Like, why mm-hmm. am I doing this to myself? For the viewers. Mm-hmm. Remember, I take that picture because I can show you you'd never do this again. But. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> I hate thinking about You've it. Been I good. love the stories, though. I do love the stories. The stories are. <laughs> I have so much more. I could literally keep going. But, like, yeah. it's. Uh, it was an experience. It was such sure. an experience. Yeah. But I don't need any more. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need any more. <laughs> People are fucking whacked out in there. There's a there's yeah. a, I love, there's an inmate they call her a little bit because she's been like in and out of there. I guess mm-hmm. not prison, but like in and out of like the system and everything since she was like mm-hmm. nine. And she's a just, little bit of time here, a little bit of time. <laughs> she's, like, she's like this just little girl. She's oh. this little older woman, mm. and um, she's like all over the place. She, she's zooming everywhere, and she just had a, a daughter. I think mm-hmm. she's uh, like two. She showed us her. She's so pretty, little girl. So pretty. Mm-hmm. And she's like, but I like to fight. Like, no teeth, okay? I can't help a girl with like, somebody give me she's a like, ring. I just keep it myself, but I like to fight. So I just fight. And you could, she's just zooming. <laughs> zooming. And she's one of the nicest ever. And she had her tablet to show us a picture of her daughter. And she goes, mm-hmm. I already know how to use this. But I really want to show my baby because she's so beautiful. And uh-huh. she's like 40, 50 years old. Okay, just had her first kid, I think. And she's like, I don't know how to. She's going like this. I don't know how to use it, and I was like, "Oh, it's okay. Like, don't worry about it." Her one of the other inmates showed her how to use it. She showed us a picture. Mm-hmm. Her daughter's stunning, beautiful mm-hmm. little girl, but she's not with her, and I don't even know how long it's gonna be until she gets out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's sad. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit just everywhere, everywhere in the little dorm, just running, running around. That's everywhere. one of the saddest things, though, when you see the older people. There's so mm-hmm. many like mm-hmm. 50, 60 year old, and There's you like see them sitting money. there like relaxing, whatever. Hi, beautiful. Hey. <laughs> Hello. and you see like the 50 and 60 year olds like sitting in there and it's just depressing and they look yeah. like in jail it's different because you're not there for the long haul mm-hmm. or like you, you don't you're not you're not aware of where you're at mm-hmm. you're still that that contemplate you see some people sitting there contemplating what they just did mm-hmm. what they what what, they, what like things they got to get in order before they go it's like a, it's a different like kind of 
level because yeah. it's the, the freshness of yeah, the hit. Yeah. You have people who have been there for a year doing their, their time there or doing that six more months of my time. Mm-hmm. Anything under a year, you're doing jail. But you still see mm-hmm. a lot of the freshness of people just sitting there like, you see the older people, you're like, damn, that's my grandpa's age. I was mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. whatever. And yeah. they're just like sitting there in jail like, this place ain't no but. And, he, and you're listening to the same shit that I'm listening to. Mm-hmm. Like, or the pregnant woman. Like there's a pregnant woman who was... Um, addicted to like heroin meth whatever the case is Mm -hmm. they had to keep giving it to her or her baby was going to die so they had to keep her high in order for yeah because of the withdrawals and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah it's the saddest thing seeing the pregnant woman in there walking around with big old bellies not knowing what they're it's going to happen to their baby not knowing if their family's going to take it like there was some that their husbands took it or whatever the case was family whatever some that i don't even think they cared what happened to it or they weren't allowed to have their baby because they just killed the other kid and they're pregnant mm-hmm. again. So they have to wait. And to, to they killed to, their kid? Yeah, prior to going to prison, hence why they're in prison. And they're pregnant so they, in prison again. So Lord. they can't have it. So they only get, and like the moms who do end up keeping their baby, but have to give it to their family, they're only allowed like a day with the baby before mm-hmm. people have to have come to and take, take it. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's the saddest thing seeing those pregnant women in there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And you can tell that some of the women don't care yeah, about their baby. Mm-hmm. And they're just walking around like, hurry up and get it out of me so I can just go back to doing drugs. Jesus. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. That's some good people. Yeah. All right, here we go. Let's get off this fucking depressing note. <laughs> Jeez, boy, y'all taking me back. I don't want to go back. <laughs> you, you, you guys have never been in jail. Obviously, you haven't been in jail. You ain't been in jail. Don't go. Besides me in a scene, there. anybody else? I think it's just you and my dad, yeah. Yeah. Cause Uncle Me never went. He got lucky. He could have been there. Yeah. Right? Everybody could have been. Yeah. He, that's he true. Got... I don't know about you. You've been pretty straight. Yeah. You could have been. Mm-hmm. Everybody could have been. Why could have you been? Do you want? Easy. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like uh, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll edit it out. <laughs> Do you want me to edit that out or not? That's fine. That's okay, fine. Okay. Look, I need to put the timestamp. So. <laughs> the puff. Where is it? Oh. What were you gonna? What were you gonna ask about my swimming? I was gonna say. Uh, uh, I forgot the question now, but I think I was gonna. I was about to disrespect. I was gonna say, bring me back. Where were you? Uh, I was gonna talk about like uh, where you, where you thought you were then, as far as like mentality and now, like how much better you think you could be now with a little bit more. Whatever. If I would have known what I know now back then, I feel like everybody could say what they would do better. But as far as like the mindset, because I feel like now you you understand working hard. I don't know yeah. how hard. I, still, I don't I'm know still if I, test I, don't, that, I don't think I don't think I have the same. I don't have I don't have what you have. I'm gonna say that right now. I like even if I went back in time right now and I told myself like, you gotta push. I've listened to David Goggins or whatever. I can't like I'm not gonna be able to push myself as hard as you pushed yourself. So I may would have gone further into it, but I wouldn't have gone to like I I'm not gonna be like a national champion in swimming. That wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but i wonder sometimes because sometimes you see people who have that dog in them and it just have it but i, then I wonder dog. if it's how I learned I have it a can dog, be learned because i've always stuck with you and i'm not i'm not afraid to lose i'll like i'll i'll, I'll go into something knowing i'm gonna lose mm-hmm. and i know people that like won't do that at all mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll i'm willing to do that just for like the learning experience and just for I like the challenge. So I'll I'll take myself there. But, but to, get to, to like a push point, yourself to, yeah, to push. push yourself past a certain aspect and like past pain and past all this and past all that, I'll get I'll give up before you would. I know. I wonder if you could if it's if how much you can learn that you have that. Because you, you know what I'm saying? Like put it this way. They gave it Goggins. Though. You do. Yeah, but then again, but it's like David Goggins, fat, oh, ooh, whatever. I do want he to... didn't always have that in him. I mean, you could say it was in him, but it was a learned thing that he said he decided. No more bullshit. Do you know who David Goggins is? How do we how do we wrap that guy up? <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a motherfucker. David like, Goggins is a guy who he's like he like he had a very like struggling childhood. He was abused and stuff. 
And then he just learned how to like just keep pushing himself and pushing himself. And I was just like the extreme at pushing himself. He does a lot of marathon okay. runs. He'll run like a hundred mile marathons and wow. just like keep running. He's got like like frostbite almost during the marathon. Oh, wow. No, not during the marathon. I think the frostbite came from uh, uh, a seal. He was a Navy SEAL and he did oh, wow. he did the buds training I think three times. But in buds, he's got uh, hypothermia from mm-hmm. the cold water and the things that we're doing, mm-hmm. but not from running. And he, he cannot, he's not good at swimming at all. He's very dense, so he mm-hmm. sinks. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a thing. Apparently, if we're like, he, he just can't float. <laughs> he's not buoyant at all. He's like yeah. negative buoyant. <laughs> he's just the epitome of like pushing yourself past mm-hmm. your limits. Yeah. That's, really? that's the mindset of controlling that and whatever. Yeah. Okay. And I can relate to it. But he's still beyond. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I guess see, I like it because I understand it, mm-hmm. and I had to do that too. But he's still beyond that. Mm-hmm. He's, he's levels beyond that mm-hmm. about whatever I've ever I've done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he has a lot. He has a lot of demons, and I feel like you have to have a certain like. I personally feel mm-hmm. like you have to have a certain amount of demons that like feed, like that you can like direct a, a good way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see what in a certain direction mm-hmm. and that it like feeds like, you like yeah. as energy yeah. as yeah. fuel Give you motivation. just keeps yeah, going yeah. i don't feel like i have that amount of demons i've no. i everybody has their hardships oh, no. here yeah. and there i feel like that's a cop out though mm-hmm. i see what you're saying yeah but i still think you can find because none of us you have, can like, find the, the motivation the, i know what how you're many saying. people have the perfect life Mm-hmm. Nobody. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be demons. It can even be, if but you it have... can be your demons that you, or whatever. But like you know, what I mean, even though like there's people who have way worse lives than me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's you know what I mean, or there's many th- tons of them. Yeah. But like they don't amount to. Yeah, it doesn't mean yeah. that they worked that hard and right. used it. Mm-hmm. And so it's just all relevant to the person. But you mm-hmm. find your motivation as long as you can like dig deep there's, and go for it. I really do think there's something to like the you know they say nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, I think there's something both. to nature, yeah. It's, it's both, but you have you do have a foundation as a person, mm-hmm. and like mm-hmm. a certain person is gonna be willing to like go further than mm-hmm. other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you, you even see with animals. I like I I remember one time I like tried to catch a frog to get out of my house. I put the thing right over it, and it was like frozen. It did not fight at all. It was just mm-hmm. like it didn't want to move. Mm-hmm. Like another another animal. Hopping all over the place, like fighting, fighting to the death. Yeah, they're not, they're not gonna give up. Lay down mm-hmm. and. But that frog oh, gave yeah. up right as soon as they heard that loud slam. Like, oh, he was yeah, like, I guess. <laughs> it, it was like, not gonna move over. until yeah. I took it all outside. Right, right, right. Where's, yeah. where's the yeah. teeth? <laughs> <laughs> but you see the difference in like personalities, and yeah. that like as yeah. as simple as something as a frog mm-hmm. has a different person personality versus another frog who have been like hopping around just trying to get out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People have the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it's you have like your fighters, yeah. You know, like people have different personalities. We have our different mm-hmm. purposes or whatever you want to call it, just our different traits. So mm-hmm. that's gonna be different for each person. I still feel like everybody can work hard though. Yeah, yeah I feel like I find yeah people, everybody has that expat. Yeah, yeah, but some people capacity. are going to give up. They're used to giving up, so they don't yeah, have. Yeah, but the... but you can. I think you can still learn. Like all right, to get to like a certain level of pushing past the pain. I think mm-hmm. that could that's where that could come from and yeah. that's where some people no one's people are just gonna push it that damn hard mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but there's people can push it harder than whatever but a lot of people just lose just coming from experience and when you think and like it's just such a valuable thing to learn mm-hmm. and this has gone throughout everything it goes through you, any art you, anything in life mm-hmm. it's just like you think you're done way before you're done especially physically mm-hmm. way before real. you're done Mm-hmm. What does that mean? That's the David Goggins thing. He what says when you when you think you hit that block, you're only four percent there. You could go you're like shocked. a whole another six. You get yeah. shocked, mm-hmm. and when you do it, just like if I can get you to, and that's why I think it's learnable. Mm-hmm. Is if I can get you to that point, and if I can just convince you that you got it and you can do it, it takes up to you to actually do it, and mm-hmm. you do it, and then you mm-hmm. start to reflect. Like I thought I was done, mm-hmm. done, mm-hmm. done, done, done. I did two more on the exact same pace or faster just mm-hmm. after that. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, it sounds like it's, we're talking about running. That could be everything. Mm-hmm. A lot of things like you think you're done. You remember how you felt mm-hmm. and you have one experience like that. I'm like, look, you just ran that two more times. You were dead. You, you were telling me how you couldn't move and you were dead. You can't make it. 
and you just did it. Mm -hmm. And on the same pace, if not faster, mm -hmm. on two more times. Mm -hmm. You thought you were done two two times ago. Yeah. That yeah. little thing, I think, what transcends the mind. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you, then you learn. He's like, all right, I, I there's way more capacity in there. And then when you're like like an athlete, you do this every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like it just. It just you can't help but learn it to your core and it's that's, such like a valuable thing because mm -hmm. there's been times where i couldn't and i'm one not a bitch so like <laughs> so when i'm thinking in my heart that i can't go mm -hmm. like i can't go anymore i'm way past other people's can't go mm -hmm. like i'm already way past other people's idea of when they think they can't go because if i think i can't go anymore mm -hmm. because i'm used to pushing it a different mentality and yeah. then when you do it, even past like pushing, and you're like, I, I remember like trying to walk to the line and I couldn't walk to the line. I'm like, get standing up, falling down. Yeah. Whatever. And he's like, 10 seconds. I'm like, I can't yeah. even get to this line. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to get to this line. And I'm like yeah. picking myself up and dropping. I'm starting to hallucinate and shit. Yeah. <laughs> and like I get to the line and I'm like, fuck it, here we go. And then I just didn't something snaps. So I'm like, I'm going to fucking go for it. Uh -huh. Instead yeah. of being like. I told you I can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, fuck, I'm going to kill myself. Let's go. <laughs> and then you just yeah, go and you do the same pace. You just do the same yeah. thing you did where you thought you couldn't even walk to the line. You thought you couldn't walk to the line. Now I just blistered this fucking track mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you thought you were done a second ago. And I've already pushed myself mm -hmm. to a point to get to that point. And then I'll have one more. Mm -hmm. Now I'm telling myself, oh, there's no fucking way now. Mm -hmm. I just did that. That was impressive. And now all these little thoughts are coming in and why you don't need to work that hard, why you don't need to do it. You can't do it. You barely could walk to that line earlier. You just, mm -hmm. and you've surprised yourself. You did it again. I have one more. And it's like, 10 seconds. And you're like, I can't even, mm -hmm. I can barely breathe. I can't stand. I'm barely standing up right now. Like I, My legs are trembling. Like, I don't think I, I can't do it. I already thought I couldn't do it. I'm proud that I made it here. And all yeah. these little thoughts that allow you to not try again, go in. And then all you just have to say, fuck that. We're doing it. It's the last one. We're doing it again. And then it's my fastest one. I mm -hmm. said my legs were trembling. I couldn't make it two times ago. And I was, and then all these thoughts, you have to override all these easy thoughts, the easy mm -hmm. outs. Yeah. And, and you're making all, make it all make sense in your head mm -hmm. yeah. and giving you an easy road to stop doing it. And then you do it. And when you do that week after week after week, you just learn that like when you're at that point, your body can do it mm -hmm. as long as yeah. your mind allows your body to do it. Mm -hmm. I had to do and that I think with that's my valuable. medical stuff all the time. Oh, like, yeah. uh, there well, like there's a bunch of instances. Huh. Like, huh. I think I was yeah, I talking to <laughs> Devin earlier a little about it, but um, I would have instances where, like, I had such packed schedule, um, like uh, dialysis six a.m. Then from there I would go to class. And from there, I would go to a job that was around an hour travel uh, to do photography in like a warehouse. And then I travel an hour back to my dorm and I'd, I would be exhausted technically. Like I would feel it in my body, but I'm like, well, I have to do it. So I just mm -hmm. like keep going and like. Once I just make that decision, I'm doing it, then it's pretty easy yeah. for me. Drive, baby. Once you decide to drive. Mm -hmm. Because literally, you have all these little things in your head about like, ah, but you're tired. You're this. Yeah, you're yeah. Just relax. Like, no, we can do it tomorrow. You had a long day already. Yeah. All yeah. these little things, and that's what you have to combat. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. It's like that with that thought process, You now when you learn to overcome it, it can, it can transcend to anything in life. Oh, yeah. Because now for you sure. know. And you understand, like, that's just bullshit. <laughs> that's you, your body's trying to tell you, your brain's trying to talk you out of the working hard part and this and giving you all the excuses. And then you, like, give into it. Yeah. And you just got to do it. Mm -hmm. I will say that's one of the biggest things I appreciate from you is because my my parents. Not just my good looks. No. <laughs> no. So, that's the land. I give a shit back. <laughs> 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 But my parents would be like easier on me. And then it's mm -hmm. good to have somebody who's going to be hard on you, like mm -hmm. growing up. So you're always harder on me. So that, that just helps like, because mm -hmm. your, your parents are going to be like, yeah, if you're hurting, just stop. Because they like, there's, they mm -hmm. love you so much and they care about you so much that they, they're going to want you to like not push it too much. I'm sure you could see that with Tannis a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but to have like an older brother figure i would say mm -hmm. that like is just like stop being a bitch just like, <laughs> <laughs> like 
Which you've definitely done that to me a couple times. You guys like touch me to drink. But <laughs> <laughs> it's because you never you should have a drink now. Don't think he tells me to stop. But I do. I do appreciate that though. It's a it's a valuable thing to have growing up. Mm. Lesson because I can see like mm-hmm. I think my mom has a really good dog in her. Mm-hmm. Like I think she has mm-hmm. a huge dog in her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's different to have like somebody that's a little bit closer to you in age to have that dog in them. And, and also a, a, yeah, also a dog that's gonna like give you shit. Mm-hmm. My mom's yeah. a dog but she's only gonna give me so much shit before but she, she also like leads stuff. by example with her dog. So that's right. something you can see right. and so but like she's not necessarily gonna push you to a brink of yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you will push me. But you're also you're also close to me in age. So to see somebody that is striving and going for it mm-hmm. a little bit closer to me than like a parent who's just like automatically like, oh you're like you have your shit together mm-hmm. when you're little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. a different dynamic. So yeah. it's valuable to see that in somebody who's just mm-hmm. like an older sibling figure versus a parent figure. Because a parent mm-hmm. is a grown person to you. You're there like... They're on a pedestal. They're just, yeah. They right, got yeah. their stuff. Right. I feel Sounds like with different. Sam, I saw... Because with all the adults, I felt... And they were also so young. If you look back at how old they were yeah. when I was young, everybody was like babies. Mm-hmm. So they like, were babies. So, and I was of an age where I can like... I felt like I was like part of it. My scene still to this day yeah. will say, your brother, yeah. your dad, your dad. Does he ever do that to you? <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All the time. Because yeah. just, it just has this feeling like, because we we're all we're all kids almost <laughs> at that time. He <laughs> always said it. He said it then a bunch of times. Your brother, your dad. Yeah. He, he's been doing that my whole life. And I think yeah. it's just because it just it was different. So mm-hmm. I, I remember seeing Sam when we just started going to school and then boom, and then she built this. Now she has a nice house and... All this kind of stuff that she like Smart. built from working hard and I mean, coming coming from I know where we came from and mm-hmm. like, we all came from I I was in their cars when the radio wasn't working the AC can't work mm-hmm. and all this stuff like I was there in the car with them mm-hmm. and I was like oh, old enough to be aware of it mm-hmm. you yeah. guys were like babies but like I so I could see it and now where you built it to mm-hmm. so you can like see that one of the cool things I remember she told me she's told me a couple of times so I don't think it it's the first time she told me that I was like oh, I think you just gassed me up. <laughs> but but she told me a couple of times that when she was going through when it was hard during like a uh, uh, school for her when she's going to school and like just trying to get edged together or whatever mm-hmm. that was uh, that she would look to like how dedicated I was with track mm-hmm. and like I had no team support like there was no way I, I brought mm-hmm. myself to track all this kind of stuff that she used me as inspiration oh, to, wow. like, to like push mm-hmm. through some of the hard parts there mm-hmm. she's like Sion's doing blah 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 I thought she was just gassing me up for the first mm-hmm. time but she's told me many times uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, pretty cool. Cool. she yeah. meant that she always yeah. looked at him as like a, I felt like a kid I was a kid, kid. so mm-hmm. it's like it's, it yeah. makes sense to yeah, like see kid. something but like it just it felt weird like an adult looking at a kid like oh look at that he's working hard mm-hmm. I don't know he almost I wouldn't have thought that to think like a mm-hmm. like an adult is looking at you as yeah. inspiration and somebody close yeah. to you like a family yeah. member that mm-hmm. never mm-hmm. told me that uh-huh. mm-hmm. and like is like silently watching and then mm-hmm. like seeing the motivation and allowing it to like motivate right. her or whatever that'd be cool and that's what I was trying to tell you guys. Because I remember I was trying to get you got to run track. I uh, saw the running potential in you yeah. and Cassie. Yeah, Sabrina had like a motherfucker. Sabrina's Sabrina. Sabrina. Yeah, so you she guys had a lot of that. Like Sabrina would have been a beast. Sabrina would have been a beast. Yeah. Because I remember we I used to do running stuff. I can just see form. I can see form. I can see whatever. I'm like, you guys can run. I'm like, well, grandma can't take me. I'm like, fuck it. But my dad told me that they, he couldn't take me. I had all the excuses everybody else had. Mm-hmm. I said, I don't care. And I just figured it out. I would go to practice when they said, we can't pick you up today. I'd go. Yeah. I was like, you, and they're not going to leave me to die. Mm-hmm. Or I'll walk <laughs> home. They were like, I felt like I couldn't leave mom with dad. Like that was a big thing for, for me not to be able to do anything. Because me and Cassidy didn't really do anything. And when we did do something, we alternated. Like Kevin was at the house a lot. And then if I went out, yeah. So if I went out, Cassie was home because somebody granted mom was there for dad, but we were also had to be there for dad. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to leave that. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? I don't want to leave him in case he needed somebody. Like, um, like when Cassie and Kevin went to prom, uh, dad went to the hospital and everything, everybody thought he was fine. He wished Cassie and Kevin, you know, have a happy prom, whatever. And Mm -hmm. it went downhill. He had to get intubated. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I was like, for me, I didn't want to put added stress on to mom or dad. 
for trying to do something that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So being able to hang out in general was just enough for me. I didn't want to push that I was trying to do because I wanted to do cheerleading. I wanted to do there was so yeah. much stuff I wanted to do. Dad mm-hmm. wanted me to do cheerleading. Obviously, he didn't like the way that they were perceived, mm-hmm. which, okay, I can't do anything about that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he couldn't really. Reason, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I didn't want to put more stuff onto them. Mom was older, so mm-hmm. it was just kind of not wanting to. She's got two weeks left now. <laughs> Shut up. Right. She, she watches this. You didn't get in trouble already. already. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's my point. point. <laughs> that's my point. I was just making a joke because of the joke that I made. <laughs> She was upset when she told me. What did she tell you? What was the word exactly? She told me. She was like. I don't even know if it. Yes, God. It's going to be out of context. I don't even feel like fixing the context. Okay. So she just told me that you guys got into it. And I was like, We didn't why? get into anything. She guys ahead. got into it. And I was like, why? And she was yeah. because Sam told me I only had two months to live. And I was like, what? That's what Cassius said too, though. Too. It was that too. way. That's what he said. That's what he said, but he was joking. Yeah, yeah I know. looked at Cassius and I was like, what No, she didn't say? say they got into well, it. Well, I, I, I wasn't there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So supposedly you looked at Cassius and was like, was that wrong saying? Cassie I like, said that, yeah. but. The like, Cassius like, yeah, like that was left up or whatever. <laughs> and you're like, all right, well, my bad. Maybe I was out of pocket or maybe I was out of line or whatever. And she's like, why would you take my hope away? Because mom's really. Um, I'll tell you what really happened in a little bit. So mom's really upset about, you know, what happened to her, her health and, mm-hmm. and everything. I'm not there at the house to help her. Mm-hmm. Um, Cassie has the babies. Amanda has her own things. Everybody has their own things. So she's alone a lot. So she sees it as where everybody was there for dad. Mm-hmm. Everybody was there no matter what to help him. Nobody's there for her now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which that's not the case, but we're all just older. We were all living under her roof. So, you know, they mm-hmm. were both there. We were going to be there. But we're mm-hmm. all older now. Like, I have and kids. And the family was still kids. intact and everybody, everybody was still kids. around. And... Yeah. So, like, she, but she's seen it. Like, I feel like. But I can't blame her. I can see, I can see you that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. She, like, Christmas this year, she's upset. She, this is the first year in like 70 years. She told me she's going to be working out by herself. Mm-hmm. And I get mm-hmm. it. Like, but I was like, go to Valerie's house. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's mm-hmm. other things you could do. You could go to Cassie's house. I know Cassie invites you over all the time. I'm not stupid. You want to drive mm-hmm. up here, walk upstairs, walk up, come up here, mom. Like, you can do whatever. But she sees that as like, in the aspect of her and dad, she's being neglected more so. Mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. that's how she sees it. Because mm-hmm. we're all there for dad. We're all there to make sure he was okay and he got to doctor's appointment and stuff. It's not like nobody making sure that she gets to her doctor's appointments because Cassie and Amanda both do. Kevin does too. I hear about it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But she just takes it, you know, she's old. <laughs> so. Just a reminder while they're drinking, this is Sion's aunt and they're talking about his grandmother. Oh, yeah. Grandmama. <laughs> yeah. My mom. Yeah. No, here's what we're going to happen. They were saying something. She said you were drunk. I was not that drunk. I didn't get drunk until he like, was. We he got was, to uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was tipsy. I was, was tipsy, but I got drunk over there. Your house? Yeah, <clears throat> that's where I got drunk. Figures usually. But, <clears throat> no, but there, they said they said something, and then they were talking about like long term something. And I said like some I, two years something, <laughs> and I'm like, I said you got like two months, and then I made a, <laughs> and then I, I, it didn't I land know. well. Yeah, <laughs> and then. Uh, Valerie, Valerie got Valerie was upset, but yeah. she didn't show it at that moment. Yeah. And, and I heard then uh, Grandma was mad. I'm like, I was joking. Cassie I'm started joking. to like try to explain her reaction because Cassie no, 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 laughed. No, and you're, oh, yeah. And, Cassie yeah, laughed. Cassie laughed like, and you're like, she laughed. But then Cassie was explaining why she laughed. And then Valerie was well, like. Then, not. Yeah. That was a little later, though, because first I was just like, they were, they were like saying what, whatever. I'm like, I was joking. I'm like, look, I was like, I didn't mean it like for real or whatever. And yeah. I'm like. I'm like, it's like, I'm like, Cassie laughed. And then Cassie was like, it was like a nervous laugh. <laughs> and then uh, she was, she's like, it was a nervous <laughs> laugh or whatever. And then um, uh, uh, Cassie starts to explain something. And she, she mentioned something about like her, like not making it for X amount of whatever time. Two years. And then, and then uh, Valerie was like, don't you say that. <laughs> Ever want to hear that out of your mouth. <laughs> and then I said, I'm like, Valerie, I know that was directed at me. Mm-hmm. You just couldn't say it to me. So you said it to Cassia. And then she like smiled at me because she just acknowledging. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I know. I'm like, all right, let's talk about it then. And then I was like, look, yeah, I'm not saying the joke landed and it was great. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, <clears throat> Grandma, look, when you, like it's like when you go or whatever, it's 
no one's going to be happy. No one's going to be, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not making light of the situation or uh-huh. like whatever. I'm not making light of it. No uh-huh. one's going to be happy. We're going to be sad. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It's not going to be a good day. It's yeah. not going to be whatever. It's the elephant in the room that we all know about. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a dark humor thing yeah. to make Which light my mom on likes, something. So I don't know why I know. she got so That's what yeah. Kevin was saying. Kevin yeah. was saying, like, <laughs> if Valerie wasn't there, she would have been laughing. Yeah. Um, that's what Kevin was saying. But then but I Valerie was. Valerie is also her sister. Yeah. So you have to no, take I, that dynamic. I get it. Too. I'm just saying. I'm like, I'm not even saying the joke was that great. I just, yeah. it was funny yeah. to me in the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, like, but I'm, I'm just nailing out. Like, I landed for a joke. I thought you. Thought you would thought think it was funny and say, oh, fuck this down or something uh-huh. like that. Yeah. And then we'd move on. Mm-hmm. Didn't land that way. Cassie yeah. laughed. She could say what she wants. Laughing. <laughs> she laughed. <laughs> but then, um, so then she was just, she was kind of coming back from it and being like, no, I like dark humor as much as the next person. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She's like, it's just, it was just <clears throat> and poor, timing, poor timing, poor but timing. But Valerie's not the person for that. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember grandpa was like on his last legs. Your grandma was cracking jokes left and right on him. Mm-hmm. All right, karma, like, baby. Right there and there. Yeah. <laughs> Stay with it. Yeah. Stay consistent or get lost. But <laughs> mom, like, really is, like, after, after what happened to her at the hospital and everything, she really is nervous because her legs aren't working. She really can't breathe. It's scary. You know, yeah, it, is, it is. It is, like, is a scary, scary thing. For sure. Yeah, because, yeah. like, we've always had mom around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For I was ever. just making a joke. Yeah, yeah. but. Of the apparent situation. We also know how mom can. Of. Be and how she takes things. Look, and I know it might. I mean, I'm not and... saying the joke was good. And I'm not saying it landed well. That's just yeah. what it was, so, like, though. I was explaining. Me, like, I wasn't how it being went whatever. And everything and she and I got into it. And we I'm didn't like, get into oh, it at all. God. I was like, for what? We didn't get into it. And she's it, like, oh, he told me I had two two months left, and I was like, <laughs> no, he did not. I was like, no. And she's like, yeah. And you know, and Valley got really upset. And da 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 da. And I'm like, what the fudge happened? That made it and sound like, like it was so to, much yeah. worse than it yeah. was. Of course, you have the to take it was mom. not like that. You have to take it from their perspective. They're they're viewing it as like you're making light of something because you don't. They're thinking maybe on the side of you don't care as much. Well, that's, that's why, why I you're making myself. Of it. That's yeah, why I, know, I explained I know, myself. I know. That's why she. Also, that's why I sat there and explained yeah. it. I was like, this is where I was coming from. This is not what it was. I'm like, trust me, this is where it was. But like I said, so I explained it. I'm like, look, if the joke was bad, go to the land. Yeah, that's on me. I thought it was. But we it didn't land, but that's be. where it was. Yeah. yeah. You got to be careful. And Valerie was never on me. She only got on Cassia <laughs> by oh. proxy. Yeah. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I also had to be like, poor the, Cassia. The but she was boring. So Cassia. when Cassia kept going on, she was like, I'm going to cut this off right now. Yeah. And that's yeah, when yeah, she yeah. jumped on it. It was fucking Cassia. <laughs> poor Cassia didn't do nothing wrong. She was just <laughs> she was trying to like explain me. But yeah. she used the, one of the words and then Dyer stood. Cat Valerie. Stu- <laughs> so yeah, but it was also probably like the end of the night. I'm assuming. Oh yeah. Dinner's over. Oh, yeah. Everybody's yeah. tired. I left them with that gym. <laughs> yeah. So my mom probably was not having it. I'm sure. Like the cleanup. You know, everybody thought they were gonna leave. My mom and my aunt were oh, by the themselves. You know wasn't... how they, they? You know how they get. Okay, I wasn't even there, and I know how they get. So Look, that's why I, I was get like, it. I get that's it. I get it. You're gonna like, explain it to me. I yeah, get it. Yeah. So I was like, I get it. guess what I heard? I'm like, look, if it was <laughs> bad, it was bad. But I'm just saying, we didn't get into it. Yeah. yeah. And Valerie wasn't like, it wasn't like this argument. It was yeah. just, it just was this little situation. Yeah. yeah. And I explained. That's why I took the time. I said, look, let me explain what I was what? doing yeah. there. <laughs> and there it is. I'm like, look, if the joke didn't land, it just didn't land. <laughs> All right, my bad. But it wasn't. It was just to be funny and make yeah. light of yeah. a situation that we all. No. Or dreading. Yeah, no. it's, kind of, it's just. It is, it is definitely a dread. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't something where no one's celebrating it over here. Yeah, it was just like, a joke, yeah. making light. We know what's up. You yeah. talk, you, I was like, you Facebook message me all the time that you think you have X amount of time left or whatever yeah. like that. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So, it's like, it's not something we don't know that yeah. we don't yeah, talk yeah. about. Mm-hmm. Elephant in the room, let's make a joke about it. Yeah. <laughs> That's I hope, what I thought. Because she doesn't like talking about it. I hope yeah. it's one of those cases where the doctors shit. are wrong. Because doctors are wrong all the time. They're just yeah. guessing, just like well, everybody else. I think it's more so, so because see it. of what happened with She's her, having a rough time. her overdose yeah. and everything like that. Like, yeah. that was like the... And the doctors tried to play it off. That was purely on the doctor. Yeah, and they... Because they, what I went there, I was supposed to go to work that day. I, I went to work. I was like, I'm leaving. I was like, mm-hmm. I'm only here to tell you because you guys didn't answer the phone. Something happened to my mom. And Amanda sent me a picture of my mom. It looked like she was intubated. So I had no idea, no explanation if she was even like breathing alive or nothing. She no. just sent me a picture of her. And so I'm calling everybody I can call to figure out what's going on. I have, I'm like, Amanda, what the fudge? I'm like, Cassie, what the fudge? I'm like, somebody tell me what's happening. And so I, I race down there and the doctors are like, um, comes in and the nurse straight up was like, she overdosed on like um, morphine yeah. and um, like a gabapentin or something. They gave her too mm-hmm. much. 
Yeah. And she, because Cassie was trying to call her and mm-hmm. didn't get no answer. And mm-hmm. finally got an answer. And she's like, oh, you're talking about patient in room like 204. And she's like, mm-hmm. yeah. She's like, oh, well, you know, something happened. We can't explain to you over the phone. She's like, what do you mean? Like, I'm her daughter. Like, yes, you can. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, we get in there and they're like, yeah, she overdosed. We, we gave her too much. The nurse flat out said that they did it. Mm-hmm. Okay, the doctor gets in there and said, oh, she just got a little sleepy. I'm like, what the fudge do you mean she got a little sleepy? They had to give her four things of Narcan to bring her back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Narcan is a nasal spray. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. know that. But it's a nasal spray. They had to give her four to bring her back mm-hmm. to somewhat consciousness. Like, she literally was had, like, her insides shutting down mm-hmm. because of how much they gave her. And when she started to come back, she didn't know what the fudge she was saying. She was saying her feet were... Um, Something about her feet being uh, like cold or she was incoherent. Being, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. she was talking about she wanted uh, soda and was pointing at something. She was <laughs> yeah. all over the place. Okay, yeah. like really bad. One thing stays true. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was it was yeah. bad. Yeah, <laughs> so um, she didn't come back to fully out of it. I think for like a day or two. Yeah. To, when yeah. I actually talked to her, she remembered talking to me. Remember the conversation. I remember somebody asked her who the president was, and she said she said like that schmuck yeah. or something she like was that. Vague yeah. Like, the word <laughs> about, like, Hell Hitler. <laughs> you ever see that meme? <laughs> I did see that. So, uh, you sent me that like twice. I love though. that meme. Ever since that, Have you seen like it? no. This is an old lady that says when the old memory gets like she's she's so old. She's it's an old German. Woman. And there's like a little shot or something with it, like a shot or something. Mm-hmm. And then she's like cheersing. It's like when the old memory resurfaces. <laughs> she's so old. She's like. And she's like very German accent too. She's like, Hell Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and people are like, whoa, grandma, grandma, grandma. <laughs> So yeah, like that's that's the fear is because of that happening to her and with everything shutting down. Mm, yeah. She has like the blood clots in her lungs. Some mm. of them are going away, some of them are coming back like with vengeance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's all that stuff that, you know, she's realizing she's not gonna she can't do what she used to do. Mm-hmm. The blood she, clots don't go away either. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's they have her on yeah. blood thinners, but they're not really doing much, and they're in both her lungs. Yeah. So it's just like she's she's panicking. Mm-hmm. She's in pure panic mode. I feel like but she's trying not too. to be, but then she wants to talk about it. She doesn't want to talk about it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what I also told her. I told her one of the things I'm most fascinated with, and that's why I brought it to Barbara. And I we started. I started laughing about that too because I'm like, because she was laughing. I remember her messaging oh. me. Apparently, you told Barbara that so you asked her. Like, so when you die, uh, blah, 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 blah. And, and she was dying laughing about it. My mom, of That's course. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, fair game for everybody, right? <laughs> but like, I'm just so fascinated with, like, I asked Grandpa the same shit. I was just, like, asked, like, I want to know what you think and what you feel when you are when you know it's coming. Mm-hmm. Sooner than later. Mm-hmm. And, like, whatever your religion is, whatever your thoughts are, are you scared? Or do you know what's going to happen when you die? Do you feel confident now? Mm-hmm. Even if you would, if ever beliefs you thought you had the whole time, is it getting shaky now? Mm-hmm. Or are you like confident? Or, you know uh, what I mean? Whatever. I like to know because I've, I've been fascinated with like death mm-hmm. for some reason. Like yeah, as far yeah. as like where, what, what happens there. Mm-hmm. And then what we feel when we know it's right there. Mm-hmm. And, and it almost anticipation for my own. Just like I just want to know. Because sometimes you'll feel people like you'll hear people like the like a grandpa the whole time always telling me. This is the truth. This is this. This mm-hmm. is how it works. This is how it works. Are you shaky now? Are you shaking <laughs> a little bit? Are you confused a little bit? Oh, he was solid. Belief. Solid yeah. to the yeah. end, baby. <laughs> and even if we think he's wrong, that's irrelevant. Because mm-hmm. I'd rather, mm-hmm. like, I personally, I don't think, like, even like with religious people, I used to, and just for the record, I've said it in other things, I'm not an atheist or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I just don't know the truth yeah. so i can't yeah, tell yeah. you the truth because mm-hmm. i don't know the fucking truth mm-hmm. and there's some things that are on the docket there's some things i think are definitely not on the docket of mm-hmm. discussion mm-hmm. but um my point is like there was a time when i believed in like the theosophy thought thoughts as far as like like what grandpa believed because that's what i grew up with grandpa yeah. seemed believed to dad the theosophy mm-hmm. stuff with materia and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff i didn't even know the name of it and until later it's, it's called this theosophy um anyway it there was more of a piece about like death even in my own like body and my like soul like that i that i felt like i knew what was going to happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. than there is now mm-hmm. there's more peace than even when i'm i kn- i know i'm wrong that there could be there could have some like there's truth elements that i think are still viable there mm-hmm. but overall as a concept uh, overall as like a doctrine we could say mm-hmm. I, that's wrong 
but there could, I still think there's a lot of elements there that could still be on the docket for a truth. Mm-hmm. But anyway, my point is there was more peace about the life and like death when I probably was wrong. And now that I find myself more closer to the truth, even though it's the truth is, I don't know, mm-hmm. but like I'm more aware of the little nuances enough to know that I don't know. Mm-hmm. And that's more scary than when I look back at myself and think I was wrong. Mm-hmm. There's more of a piece of being wrong. Mm-hmm. So even though I, when I look at like people that like are like super religious that I don't agree with, I still think like, what do I want you to do? What I think the way I think? Because mm-hmm. it's not more peaceful over here. Yeah. It's, not, <laughs> it's, it's not, not comfortable. Yeah, yeah it's not I, comfortable I've here. Been there. I've yeah. been there. Yeah. It's not comfortable. Mm-hmm. It's more comfortable to, to know. To just believe. In yeah, that. and just yeah. to believe. And know and that I know it's gonna happen what, when I die. What do you mean when you say believe? And Anything what? that like any like, like an after like, like, imagine like the Christian oh, okay, okay. and heaven and stuff like that. And the way they would thought it was like reincarnate and theosophy, mm-hmm. reincarnation, your higher self, and, mm-hmm. and reindoing this uh, incarnation. Grandpa and his belief might be Tannis mm-hmm. in his spirit. He might be you know what I mean. A new mm-hmm. generation come in. Might be Logan Will or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, he, mm-hmm. and his soul could be reincarnated, mm-hmm. and, and we also all stay like knitted. Our mm-hmm. souls are intertwined yeah, yeah. in mm-hmm. a certain way, where this thing's gonna get recycled, yeah. and we're like lifelong whatever. Yeah. So he's mixing. He's so, mixing more of like a buddhist mm-hmm. christian what's well, theosophy so that does yeah. that that's what that means yeah. yeah well theosophy is that group and there's more to it but mm-hmm. then do. that's that but my point is like anything that you think is the truth there's a unless it's dark but like <laughs> in certain ones that feel good uh-huh. yeah there's a piece there that i don't get anymore mm-hmm. because i'm too fucking anal about everything and yeah. i don't know so when I, I feel like unless i get to another point which i hope to get mm-hmm. to a point where i'm like i feel very solid about here and here mm-hmm. or i feel more about the stuff that might be scary because i don't think the truth is there for me to like it mm-hmm. the truth is the truth regardless if i like it or not yeah mm-hmm. so i don't think it's there for me to like it mm-hmm. so i don't have to like it mm-hmm. but it felt better <laughs> when i did like it and yeah, i yeah. felt like i knew Mm-hmm. And then my interest is like with like grandpa. That's my biggest interest. Like you're here now. Mm-hmm. We both know. Everybody knows. Mm-hmm. How are you? And he was just so confident and relaxed about it. He, he was, was like, mm-hmm. he's like, we're. It's like all right. I know it's gonna happen when I die. You know. And I think dad's like that too. Mm-hmm. Like they just. I know it's gonna happen when I die. And that piece of going into that is so much better than being fearful of going into that. Mm-hmm. It's great. As I would yeah. be fearful. It's so much. Yeah. There's so much value. That's why there. I can't like if someone's like related yeah. or whatever like. I don't even necessarily. Want, I'm just arguing the points. But if I if I had the a magic wand to be like you believe what I believe now, yeah, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's not better over mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. I do want to know, like, Simon, off of that. I want to know, like, because you've had a lot of more. Oh, you probably seen the light, baby. You probably yeah, seen yeah, the light, yeah. my boy. <laughs> so how have well, you? I, let me pee real quick. Up here. Okay, okay, okay. I can hear you guys. You guys go. Ahead. Okay. So how have um, you felt about the? Uh, when you were in like your dire situations, like well, did you I've feel solid or did you feel more shaken on like you don't know yeah, what's going on? Just explain. Oh yeah, okay. How so, close you okay. were to some of these points. Okay, yeah. so basically, I've had ninety-four medical surgeries, and I have died in one of them for sure. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. No. Which they told me on accident, but. Uh, my dad overheard them on accident. Like, they don't have to tell you if they bring you back. And uh, they were just in, like, um, the hallway talking about it. And they, they call it coding. But, um, yeah, they're like, yeah, this patient coded. And my dad knew it was me. And he's right. like, what? And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, he died for, like, two minutes or something. Do you remember how old you are? For that, like it 14? had to be like 17 or 17. 16. It was in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I died there and I don't remember anything from that. Like, <laughs> she only wants answers. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but uh, there was other times that I remember, uh, like out of body experiences more so that I told the doctors what I saw and they said that happened, but like they didn't say anything past that. I'm just like, I saw you do this and this. And uh, it was just calm. So I'm not really scared to death, like at all. Like, um, I kind of go the opposite route of like, um, like, being 
like I get what you're saying about like having that belief, like knowing what's after, but I'm sort of the opposite where I'm like, I'm just cool with finding out what's after and like enjoying what's now. So my so. fear is when what's when what could be on the docket is nothing. That's fine with me. Yeah, there's no figuring it out. It's just there's no. Yeah. I don't. I think know that's very, the case, but I'm scared of that one. I think yeah. I'm scared very, of like because I think also like this even the reincarnation, the ideas of these things. Yeah. Maybe that is actually taking. But it makes from an idea sense from, of a spiritual like everything's consciousness. Everything's this. Energy so your is never created what, or destroyed. My point being yeah. that maybe that doesn't mean that it re, that consciousness is so let's say the right, whole universe right. and everything's consciousness. It's a different, it's a different you're not in the same. Yeah. 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 What you think is consciousness and what you think the way you experience it now mm. is not necessarily what happens when you like that. Maybe that's mm. just the spark of just everything around us and you're just going right. back into that. So you never die. That soul never dies, but it's not the same that it is experiencing something right now. Mm. So you're therefore not this individual um being like the way we're feeling where, yeah, yeah. Is, where you're not going to find out anything but your essence isn't dead right. it's just back into the whatever another and it's going to flow into some other form of whatever <laughs> i think like everything's con- I, I don't think i don't know it's all on the docket <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like tree everything the building the mati- all these atoms everything is this is all consciousness and the universe is all that mm-hmm. and so like whatever is this just kind of flows into the ether of consciousness again yeah yeah and so, that's scary to me, even though it's like we're all one, we're all this, yeah. everything is one so what, thing. That's exactly what gives me comfort in that situation. Me. I get yeah. how it's scary. I'd rather scary, be conscious. But and, the fact that we it. are all in the same thing, we're all together, we're all one, that mm-hmm. gives me comfort. Yeah. So even if I'm in a different consciousness, I'm still with this whole earth, pretty much. Yeah. Well, it'd be the universe. Universe. I think the whole universe, like, everything, yeah. everything. I feel like... So, uh, when that it comes to that. Comfort, that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, so when Nolan was like four or five, and we were driving from McDonald's to my mom's house, and he, we were listening to music, and he's like, Mommy, he goes, um, I died, mm-hmm. and God picked me to come to you. And when I tell you, I cried. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I got chills and everything. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I was old and I died. And God picked me. He's like, I'm going to take you to somebody. And he, he's like, and I brought he brought me to you. And I was like, like, where is this coming from? I remember I mm-hmm. called Cassie and Kevin because I was like, what? How does a four or five year old know to say this? And he doesn't remember mm-hmm. at all. And it was like the wildest thing. And then still to this day, no one will look up in the sky and he'll point out a star. He goes, that's your dad right there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, how do you know that? Because obviously mm-hmm. he's never met dad. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how do you know that? And he goes, because I just know he's right there. Mm-hmm. And I talk to him all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's like. And dad always talked about like reincarnation mm-hmm. and everything like that. And I was like, oh, shut up, old man. Like, I was like, like mm-hmm. I believe it too. I always believed it to an, to an extent until mm-hmm. Nolan said that to me. And it's only Nolan. It's not Willow. Mm-hmm. It's only Nolan that ever gets very like, um, like sentimental mm-hmm. and like he'll draw pictures of dad and mm-hmm. he'll point him out over here or just like say little things about him. Mm-hmm. And it's literally, it gives me chills. It's the weirdest, but it's the most comforting thing mm-hmm. that I know like, okay, something has to happen like from beyond mm-hmm. for Nolan to have like some sense or sort of like um connection to him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because for a four or five year old to out of nowhere, just tell me that God brought him to me mm-hmm. and then to always like bring up dad and point out stars and like, that's him. And I talk to him and, you know, I know he's here and everything. It's the wildest thing. It's and it's, there's a, it's other a bunch of stories thing. of kids. Yeah, yeah. That's re, a big thing that gets telling me old stories of like war, especially like of mm-hmm. like World War One. Like I was in this plane and, and drawing mm-hmm. things when they're little. And yeah. they're like, and how does he know about us? I never yeah, believed yeah, it. You know what I mean? Like what? I never believed it until Nolan actually did it to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, whoa. And I remember calling Cassie Cameron. I was like, you never believe what Nolan said. Mm-hmm. You will never believe what Nolan said. And they're like, mm-hmm. what? And I'm like. He told me, okay, that I, God picked me for him, okay? So I have mm-hmm. to be doing something right, all right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, always, he'll talk to Cass and Kevin about it, too. Like, grandpa's over here, or, mm-hmm. like, or he'll just, like, ask me about him mm-hmm. to, like, get to know him more and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's the most comforting thing I have ever. Like, I don't like getting into death. I'm not, like, a mm-hmm. death person. I don't like getting into it because I don't, like, into it. I don't like <laughs> thinking. Years, I hate it. I don't want to think about how I'm going to leave no one will yeah. by I, himself. I think, that, I don't that, you see, it freaks me out. No, I, I don't, think about I don't, the other end. 
I don't ever want to. I think way too much about it. Same. I it, it literally just puts me in like a really bad, uh, like sad mood all the time. But for when Nolan and Willow will bring it up to me, I don't like steer clear from it. But I'll just like pick and kind of choose what I say. Mm. But when they talk about dad, like I'm, I'm all in because mm. like for them wanting to know and them sensing and feeling and stuff like that, I'm like, okay, like there has to be some more, something more to it. Mm. And whatever it is, I'm fine with. I used to have so, this old one sec. You go. I used to have this one uh, memories of when I was young. And it was like, and I can't explain it because it was like very little flashes of seem like it was a memory, seem like it wasn't a memory, seem like it was a dream, mm-hmm. seem like it was whatever. But it was like a sense of self mm-hmm. of like, and it was never older though, it was like a kid. And it was like, like I, I was a redheaded kid. <laughs> I was a redheaded white kid with freckles mm-hmm. and, but if, if the memory seemed like a sense of self mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it was weird, I never, we're not, nothing was like planned out like memories, like a, and then, then I went, I was over here doing this. It was just like images, flash images yeah. of like mm-hmm. almost looking in the mirror or something. Mm-hmm. And I had these weird like images of like, but it, sent, it felt like a sense of self rather mm-hmm. opposed to yeah. like yeah. something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it was meant, like of dreams or, or what it was, but I remember feeling it was different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like a sense of self and it was like this redhead, freckled mm-hmm. white kid. And that's all I. That's all I. Know. Really? Yeah. And that's it always cool. felt like a sense of self thing uh-huh. though. That was the weird part of yeah, this yeah. particular Mm-hmm. flash of memory that I would have mm-hmm. I never get it anymore never had it for years but I always remembered that mm-hmm. like I can even right now kind of call it but I still mm-hmm. can't see a, a face or an image but I can feel that the energy when uh-huh. I felt like to see it and I can uh-huh. feel like I see little mm-hmm. I couldn't draw it <laughs> <laughs> but like I, I, I used to have something like that but mm-hmm. who knows what that is mm-hmm. I just yeah. remembered it was it was a weird it is a weird memory mm-hmm. it's not even know if it's a memory I don't know what it was, <laughs> yeah. it was it's a weird thing uh-huh and it was only when I was like real mm-hmm. little. Yeah, There's cool. uh, been other times that I remember that were closer to death uh, for me. Like, um, there was one time, it was, I went in the hospital for the simplest thing. I had chicken pox. But, you had chicken pox? Huh? I've never had chicken Yeah. yeah. You're, you're, supposed to get, you're supposed to get it when you're little. You probably can't get yeah. vaccinated for it. But, um, yeah, I got chicken pox like my freshman year of college and uh i went in and it was like a friday night and the regular transplant team wasn't on call or anything so they gave me a medicine that you're not supposed to give to kidney patients and then they gave it to me for three days straight without knowing that and i just started hallucinating and like really bad i couldn't like form sentences or anything yeah. and so tell me about that. yeah and then um it was the one time i've had to call dad and be like i can't handle like this hospitalization by myself and he was shocked because like it's just chicken pox but we found that out and then i like they had to do dialysis to clear it out once they figured it out but they also had to be we strict my drinking so it was hard to clear out too and uh so my blood pressure just dropped went on like i think they did three or four dialysis in a row like once they found that out and on the last one my blood pressure just dropped to like an infant basically and like i could still talk but i'm like i might die here like i told Mm -hmm. uh, dad and he was like, and uh, that one was more so scary just because the physical feeling, I wasn't technically scared of like the dying aspect. I was just like feeling the symptoms of what was happening. And that like got me freaked out. But like, I never been scared of the like idea of death because like, I'm just enjoying like all the relationships I make and like life in general to where like whatever comes after is just like a perk or some I have to deal with later. Mm-hmm. Like it's not. Yeah. That's a very good way to look at it. Yeah. That's a that's an awesome way to look at it actually. Because yeah. we have, I feel like we're lucky. I feel like I'm lucky at least. So 
just the fact that I have you guys, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of people that don't have that, like, foundation. They're just, like, super yeah. lost in the world. They don't have, like, family that they're super close to or anything. They never have that connection with people. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they're just, like, off on the deep end on their own, pretty much. So yeah. they don't have a foundation of who they are or what they want to do or anything. At least just, like, who they are, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. even if I had, like, tough times, I always knew, like, who I was because I had, like, a fallback mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. on my relationships with mm-hmm. the whole family because yeah. I was always yeah. with a big family. Mm-hmm. And dad, Not everybody has sorry. had that. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah, just going to say, and dad, even, like, on my worst times or, like, either medical or, like, uh, uh, mentally, uh, dad was would always just say it's not going to be like this forever and like over time him just saying that over and over i realized it was true and then Mm -hmm. i got really good at just waiting it out and helping it move along adopting that ideology yeah so like that helps a lot yeah yes (laughs) those are wise words they really are that's Mm -hmm. the shit ain't he Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) He's a shit. Like he's shit. <laughs> what, you, what you think in your mind is a big player as to how long you last, how much fight you have in you. It's it yeah. plays a lot into all of that. So. Oh yeah, I read that book from the guy, uh, Man Search for Meaning, mm-hmm. dude who was in. Uh, I don't know if it was just Auschwitz or maybe it wasn't Auschwitz, but it was these Nazi concentration camps, multiple ones. I think Auschwitz might have been one of them. But uh, he was a psychologist. So he was a psychologist who happens to also be in these uh, these camps. So he's able to see and like he was evaluating like these people, not like just like just being able to reflect later and like where he was and mentally and all these kind of things. And it's called Man Search for Meaning about like when there's nothing and you have nothing to look forward to and that all this craziness has happened to death, the whatever, the the, the starvation, just the wild shit you're seeing, all the family being killed, the kids being torn apart and getting killed. Like just wild stories. Mm-hmm. What was the difference between somebody who held on and when people lost their meaning, mm-hmm. they always died. Even if it was self-inflicted, mm-hmm. just gave up. When they lost it, you could tell he's not going to make it. He's going to die. They say a lot of people, when their spouse dies, they don't mm-hmm. last that much longer after them. Like a lot of the older couples. Because mm-hmm. you lose that your, your partner all your life. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't have that much of a push to just like keep going on. Mm-hmm. So you just give up, and then that's how it just bottoms out eventually. Which would, like, tie into what he was saying. Mm-hmm. It's like, when mm-hmm. you lose that, like, meaning thing. It it's not, and it was always different from, for, for person to person, mm-hmm. and it was always, sometimes it was religion, sometimes it was their kids, their family, mm-hmm. sometimes it was, and sometimes they would lose something. Like, it was my kids. Mm-hmm. Their kids are dead. Now, he found that out. That's tough. Now what? That's yeah. so mm-hmm. tough. Some people still find the next thing to find the meaning for. I don't for. know if I'm that strong. I don't oh, know. I'm, I'm, that go, is I'm a going, hard baby. Hard I'm hard going hard. with you, baby. Uh, yeah, I'm going with you. That's hard. Children, That's the part. I don't know. Yeah. I don't when know. I hear the stories. I wouldn't want to, I feel like. I wouldn't want to continue on. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, they're the reason that I'm You'd have, you'd have to check to. me in a ward immediately. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Immediately. Our, uh, our great-grandma, Mary, she outlived all of her yeah. kids. She found something. Mm-hmm. You can't fault. Yeah. It's just like, but yeah. there's something that gives you, you have to find something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it would change because sometimes you're forced to change, but there's something. When you lose the meaning at all, that was mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And all of them would just self destruct and just. I would self destruct. But some people yeah. would 100%. swap importances and sometimes mm-hmm. it would turn to religion, sometimes mm-hmm. it would turn to just whatever it I was. I want to, like, some people would just be like, again. I'm going to make it out of here and I'm going to tell people about I this. Yeah. And then that was their meaning. Yeah. It could have been anything, but yeah. as long as they had something and it changed time to time, they were able to keep going. Mm-hmm. I will yeah. say I, I do. I clock out. Yeah. <laughs> I right. clock out. I'm out. What would you say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm you like, I do what believe, a chamber at. <laughs> yeah. I do believe in energies, and if you look like cells oh, yeah. and stuff, there are cells that are attracted to certain other cells like neutrons and stuff they'll go around the nucleus and whatever Mm -hmm. so i do feel like that we're like just on a different plane but we're still there's similar aspects to it Mm -hmm. this is just my like random view on things Mm -hmm. so i just think that like this the souls or whatever you want to call it the energies that you're close to Mm -hmm. they'll keep on 
evolving around you so like when you if you die and then you wake up eventually as like a different being whatever it is in the future when everything just decomposes and like forms into a new thing form Mm -hmm. you're still gonna have like certain energies around you that you've always had around you so even Mm -hmm. if you don't remember it you're gonna have yeah because you you'll like it, this is like anecdotal. Kind of sense. This is anecdotal, but like you'll meet people and you feel like you just have like a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. connection yeah. to them like mm-hmm. that, and it's like, sure. why do I feel that way about this person? It yeah. could be mm-hmm. anything. It could uh-huh. really be yeah. anything. But like I'm just like gonna as as maybe they were. Shut <laughs> that computer, up. <laughs> hey, that computer could have been your sister. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. That's just like a that's just an idea I have. I'm not like Mitchell's. solid on anything for sure. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not solid on anything. I'm very mm-hmm. like I don't know. Mm-hmm. I really don't know. It's hard to know. See, I, I don't enjoy that not being I don't, being, I don't not think I can knowing. handle knowing. Like yeah. me and Cassie were talking today. Um about depends on what knowing thing. is. Yeah, see, yeah. but because if it's bad like Mowgli. I don't want it. No. Oh, <laughs> she was okay. talking to She's talking about, about Mowgli movie and yeah. she's like, I, I understand I'm gonna have to explain the circle of life to Arlo, whatever. I'm not explaining crap to know the Mowgli. You don't need to know the circle of life. I am too emotional for that. I'm not explaining that stuff. Okay? Mm-hmm. I can't handle it. I don't wanna know myself. All right? I don't wanna mm-hmm. have to explain to my children like how people die. I don't like that. Like mm-hmm. when my mom was in the hospital, out she's in the hospital, she doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. That's literally what I said. I'm like, I don't want to have to explain that. But Grandma, then you're also not prepping them for the you do, eventuality. Yeah, it's good I, to prep. I understand that, but like, until I know what's going on for sure, I'm not explaining. I can't. I literally just, I don't know how. It's going to be a lot worse later. I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to scare them. I don't want to them to be like I'm nervous constantly and worried about it. Like every time I get sick, they're too, they they are freak too out. young for Mommy, it. Mommy, you're going to be okay. Like they'll like mm-hmm. start rubbing my back, my yeah. hair. They're so mm-hmm. loving. Yeah, and Tannis it, hears that I'm getting old. That's, they that's, freak out. He, he they knows panic. about uh, Grandpa. Because I told him, like, he asked me why he died. And I'm like, mm-hmm. just got really old. And then ever since then, he, he'd be like, he, I remember, he, like I told you this story, he'd wake yeah, up yeah. and be like, he's like, he died. I'm like, damn. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he was like, uh, he's like, he got old and he died. And he was telling everybody this story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it was just like so fresh. Us, yeah, yeah, he told See, everybody. See, but I, I don't want to have to explain to normal. Like, I know, like, like with mom. When the time comes, I'm going to have to explain what's going on. But for right now, I don't have to explain. I don't feel like I have to explain to them that she is old to where at any moment something could happen. Mm-hmm. I don't want to explain that stuff yeah, to them. No, I am like too emotional. Fear. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I'm too emotional okay. for that. Okay. I'll start crying. No one will cry. Nothing's getting said. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's going to be crying. I can't. I like, I can't handle like death and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. Like when they ask about dad, like I talk about dad, but I don't want to get too into it, like why he died mm-hmm. or how he died. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't want to have to like, they're little. I don't want them to worry about that. I mm-hmm. want them to enjoy whatever the hell they want to enjoy. And then when a certain time comes, I'll explain that to them. Yeah. I don't want to have keep, to do yeah. it. You want them to keep their innocence. Exactly. I don't want to yeah. have to no. like, and that goes with like stuff on TV that I see. And they're asking me, oh, what's that? And I'm just like, with like same sex couples or mm-hmm. whatever that or interracial couples like I don't want to have to explain something that I feel like <laughs> I don't want to have to explain something that um doesn't need to be explained I feel like I mm-hmm. want them to keep their innocence as much as they can mm-hmm. until the time comes for that there's yeah. seven and eight I don't feel like this is the time for it yeah. <laughs> so that makes sense yeah there is there yeah there's a time and then there's not a time yeah. like you don't have to you don't need to be worried about that at like seven or eight yeah, yeah. Really amanda's probably the first one who told me tell you what about drag queens and all and, all, and yeah, just, i don't want to explain that to them they don't need to know about yeah. it Same. amanda did it transgender all that stuff <laughs> at what age know. i don't know you don't remember it i was young no i remember the, i remember the conversation i was just young i might have been seven this is your last one though. unless you want to see on margaritas and then i remember you're on it <laughs> Good. Um, so if you're watching MTV, <laughs> you know that uh, song um, by Something Culture, um, the uh, Karma, 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 Chameleon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That song. That's disgusting. Oh, it's a dra- Have you seen the video? Ooh. I think so. It's a straight drag queen know. video, but it was on MTV Music Videos. It came on, and she's like, "You know those are drag queens, right?" <laughs> and because I remember, I think I asked, I'm "Like, are they? Is that a guy?" <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just like oh yeah, the other drag queens and they mm-hmm. guys that dress like girls 
Because she explained it to me in her child ways. So <laughs> like, like it wasn't totally accurate. Yeah. But she got the gist across. Yeah, no. See, I and then she started that. talking about everything. And then she used to talk about how Shane was gay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Shane was gay? Shane's, no. No. But <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> and then I think she made a joke. And I took it seriously. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. We're kids. But yeah, see, I, I just remember there was a conversation. <laughs> Could have been a joke on her end. I thought it was real. Yeah. And then I realized, but I remember thinking it was not real. And I made jokes. I remember one time I got in trouble. Grandma saw, I wrote I wrote questions down. We're about to go to Disney or something like that. Mm-hmm. I was writing questions down on a piece of paper. And all I had to do was say yes or no. Mm-hmm. Not know the question. And I wasn't going to tell you the question. <laughs> uh-huh. So one of them was like, are you gay? And he said, yes. I'm like, got him. <laughs> and then I put it down and that was it. We went to Disney. But then she found the paper and she got real mad at me. She's like, this is not kind of. What are you doing? No, uh, I forgot. <laughs> Amanda's another one of his exes. That's her sister. Exes. Just make sure people know. Oh, what ants, ants. Another one of his ants. <laughs> Roll the tape. My bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. <laughs> it's not one of his ants. Yeah. There we go. I know one time I convinced. This uh, girl got a lot of insiders. Side of the family. On. That so I was gay for a solid. Didn't take much. Ten or fifteen minutes. <laughs> Don't do him like that. And then, and then, and then they, were like, True, they eventually, <laughs> they eventually asked my mom, and she's like, "What? Who told you that?" <laughs> I'm just like laughing. <laughs> and she's like, "No, he's not." And they're like, "Oh," <laughs> but like. I still remember how convinced I had them. And they <laughs> did it so... They didn't even question Yeah, so they didn't question like, at oh, all. Shit. All right. <laughs> I was there one, one time. <laughs> I used to call him gay all the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, 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 do you, what, what else do you have on your list? Because no. we need to switch this. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's right like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to do my boy like that. I mean, other than I think we got it. I mean, I got UFC on there, but I don't think we need to do all that. I think maybe when, oh, we, have, when we have at this point, if we get down to our uh, UFC one on one, we could, could do UFC. Okay, I could do one on one UFC yeah. with you. I didn't know UFC. I don't yeah, know. they don't know anything yeah. about UFC, so yeah. we're just. I mean, gonna do... earlier on we could. Have... Is there anything else? Okay. Anybody what time? Know? Like how long are we? We're right? at like almost two and a half. Damn. Yeah. Mm. Holy fudge. It's not bad. I thought we'd be Maybe. at three hours. We can bring I mean, back memory lane and see how bullying us when we were little. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. We used to do the um it thing. Mm-hmm. You and I are the only ones who lasted. Do you remember that? Remember no, the last we lasted. Time? We lasted because you did um the it thing or the room thing? The room thing. The, the scary, sound? The scary noises. Oh, yeah. I, I lasted. Oh, I turned the lights off? Yeah, you were turning off. And I, being I lasted once because you know I, I specifically... Oh, we, we, no, I did. <laughs> I mean, like, the, the most really scariest human to. in the family. No, though. but I did once because like, I set out to and I like you zoned said, out. You're probably- yeah, I was. I won't make it. Yeah. Didn't you wake up? Terrorized. Um, there's a fire and he ran. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What? When uh, it was me and Brian and we were like, we we're pretty much pulling on all night or playing uh, Halo. And you were watching us play Halo all night and you fell asleep on the couch. It was like, <laughs> yeah, King's Cove. And I woke up like, fire is a fire is a fire. Come on, we gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go now. Let's move. Let's move. And he straight from sleep. <laughs> and we took him all the way out the house straight to the to the street past yeah. the driveway oh to the God. street and he's holding a blanket like, <laughs> and we're like we're fucking up that's my that's so I said let's go back inside that was one time after so that nice. I'm pretty sure where you got shut he was, was like, outside like you can see him looking at the house like where is the fire <laughs> like everything looks good you're like let's go back to sleep baby why are you out here <laughs> Straight there from a. Was, <laughs> that's, 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 that's there was one up. time that's where I was falling asleep watching you, watching you guys play Guitar Hero, I think, after that. And you guys said there was a spider, and I just stayed. And there was a spider, actually, that time. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, I think I did remember that. <laughs> yeah, just knocked out. And like. This is like, the, yeah, the boy sure. who cried wolf. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I'm thrilled. And it's poisonous. <laughs> and I'm just like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm watching too much. <laughs> I got that like a uh, little dark room thing. I I figured I got that one from, and I think it was on MTV too. 
was on TV when they had like uh, they would take. I don't, I don't even know. They had camera, like he- headgear and like cameras to watch them. And they would go into like a haunted mansion or a haunted like mm-hmm. anything, mm-hmm. and they had to see how long they can stay and different things would be like lights out. And they'd all freak out if they ran out. They lost. Yeah, me and Devin. So I made our own little game. game. And then you did the it one where we were watching it, and then you had the mascot at that greenhouse. Mm-hmm. That was before that. That was way before that. That greenhouse. Before we were staying in the. That's Sage's room. favorite house. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there like an old lady? The old lady ghost. <laughs> yeah. That was the old lady ghost. It's still yeah. why I don't trust old ladies. <laughs> 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 I know I'm y'all like, like a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you stay on <laughs> He was haunted by, we had a, a house that was green. Yeah. He was haunted by a particular old lady that seemed yeah. pretty legit. I never saw her, but you were definitely frightened of this one. I remember one time. She uh, trolled me. She told you. Trolled. Oh. Like she would hold the blankets over my body just out of reach, and so they weren't like covering me. Really? Yeah, I specifically remember that. Uh-huh. You don't think there's any part because you were you were it's my it thought. At the same <laughs> time, you were getting in home dialysis. Yeah, you were young. You had nurses staying overnight. Yeah. Is there any part of that could just be a little hallucination from something? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because at that time kind of, you were at a home dialysis yeah. with a nurse in the ha- in the room. She wasn't that old. She wasn't I remember old. No, she wasn't the that lady old. being like, "Oh." As soon as she left out the room, it's my <laughs> turn now. <baby. laughs> and specifically, like the blanket floating, I remember, and that annoyed me. It was of course, really annoying. I specifically. I mean, you were frightened of her. Yeah. What was the thing that you said in that same house? It was the same house you and Sabrina were scared. Oh, uh, yeah. Sleep M- me and Nina were, we were watching Free Willy, and then something happened, and we were scared, and we were like, we don't want to sleep by ourselves. So we are like, Sion, can we sleep with you? And he sat on the floor. He's like, right there. <laughs> and we were like, what? He goes, you want to sleep in here? Sleep on the floor. And we are like, okay, so we did. <laughs> we didn't know what to do. What happened? Love him, brother. I don't remember, but I know that we were watching Free Willy. I don't know if you were scared, sad. Something's going Free on. Free Willy? Yeah. The, the, the least scary movie ever. Yeah. Okay, something that's happened. What I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if you were sad or scared or what would happen, but we did not want to see by ourselves. We just were not having it. So we knocked on your door and we were like, Sam, can we sleep with you? And you're like, right there. <laughs> I remember sleeping in the room. Hey, by the end of the day, I let y'all in. Yeah, yeah, you did, but you told us to go on the floor. Not the best thing, not the best move, <laughs> but I let y'all in. <laughs> he told me a whole scary story when I stay in the room with him at that house and he was like <laughs> I remember him being on the corner of the bed and then he just like popped his head out while he was, he was like reenacting the story and like th- when he popped his head out he was just like just looked like a freak <laughs> <laughs> he just started like sp- just splurging some bull just some bullshit <laughs> that's I got to go I got to go yeah <laughs> I still remember that Damn, dog so licking story. Yeah, I remember that one. That got me too. That's the I worst. remember that too. Somebody the told me he fucked me up, so I fucked y'all with it. That was when a circle. <laughs> that was. Yeah, I hate like bursting out of the room. Yeah, that's when I busted yeah, yeah. through you. You ever heard that story? Uh-huh. It was when <laughs> I'll wrap it up. You, <laughs> you never the dripping of the blood and the licking. Such All right, so there you like. Uh, I don't remember if I said it was this girl that was sleeping or something. Yeah, Somebody was, was sleeping girl in sleeping. the bed, right? Yeah, and, her dog. Uh, she was um she would like lay in the bed. She put her hand to the side. And her dog slept under her the bed, mm-hmm. and they would lick her hand and kept licking her hand. And then uh, she would just <laughs> kept waking up all night to put her hand down, lick her her hand. And then like she started hitting, uh, hearing like a drip sound from the faucet in the in the bathroom, and she's like put her hand down. And I like licked her hand, and then she just kept doing it. It's like, all right, what the hell? We turn this faucet off. She goes in the room or into the bathroom, and the dog is dead, gutted, and dripping blood. So that dripping sound is what, and in in the on the wall in blood, it says humans can lick hands too. Oh my god! It's kind so of scary, the whole, right? Yeah, the whole time yeah. she was like putting her hands. You guys down. all feel that? Oh, a little bit? No, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still. Yeah, so I that right now. No, but the funny part was I told this story <laughs> one time. We were night. all under the bunk bed. So like in you remember their bunk bed like mm-hmm. it was like kind of enclosed. We're all yeah. deep in. He's the deepest. Yeah, but like the back wall, <laughs> and we're all in like rows. And I tell the story, and as soon as they said humans can lick blood too. He, oh, is this during the hurricane? When you told us yeah, this? Yeah, the lights were off. I don't know. It, no, no, no. It, it wasn't. Not the hurricane. Oh, we Angelo the was on. there, I remember. Yeah, it Angelo was you was and there. Angelo. Angelo was there. 
Yeah. And pre- this wasn't in um, the McKinney House? <coughs> Winter Circle. No, Winter Circle. No, oh, okay. Because you used to do that horror stuff when the lights were off during a hurricane and tell us these horror stories. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah not this it. particular one. Yeah. He screamed. Like, you hear, like, I, as soon as I get the line out, humans can lift hands too. <laughs> <laughs> But he erupts out and he's trying to hobble over just so many people to cross and he's just <laughs> knocking his way through, screaming the whole time, bloody murder. <laughs> Jets out the room, runs straight to dad in the living room. And we're like, it was the most funny fucking thing ever. Cause he was like, it was like, it, 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 cause as soon as I got the line out, he was gonna hit that dude. What? <laughs> Pushing everybody, trying to run out. Gets out, goes to dad. Yeah. Dad gets on my case. It's like he has heart issues. You can't make them stay like that. You can do that with the other kids. You can't do that one. I'm like, tell a scary story. I didn't know that was going to happen. Like, you just erupted. And she don't try to open the door for me, and I, like, pushed him. <laughs> no, nobody was safe after that one. Yeah. But it was just funny, because as soon as I delivered the line, yeah. and I did it one of those, like, yeah, yeah. humans can lick hands, too. And I didn't even know that. It scared me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> just kill. Pushing uh, everybody out. Poor thing. It was so scary. It was a scary story. I remember one time, <coughs> Sabrina's in the car giving me shit. You and Sir Sarai were there. She was giving me shit. And I just picked her up from school or picked him up from school and I'm driving home. I don't remember what. I said, I'm like, you can get out right now. <laughs> and I, I parked the car. I parked the car. I was like, get out. Walk home. No, you want to talk that shit? Walk home. Get out. Get oh out. God. <laughs> and she's like, all right, then shut up and sit back there. <laughs> I drove home. I don't know what's, why that story came out. That's a scary <laughs> one. It's just rude. Sorry, <laughs> Maybe scared Sabrina for a second. Sabrina, then she got to think twice. She was like, I'll stay. <laughs> you want to have a... Sabrina's the only one. Uh, I'm the only one Sabrina doesn't mess with. Like, she... Always like message with Sarai, San Miguel Christian, like whoever. But with me, she like leaves me alone because I messed with her like so much as a kid. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I like almost bullied her. But... <laughs> you had to get it out somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> she still doesn't mess with me. And she knows she can't. She's like, I've but... had enough of you, Sage. Yeah. You can live. It's so funny. My favorite part is when I'm going to give her the Sabrina room. <laughs> she was in the closet. Her room was in the it was the bathroom, and there was like a walk-in in the like a walk-in closet in the bathroom. That yeah. was her room. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, I used yeah. to every time we find like they find like a new place or whatever. <laughs> like, oh, this is like a good Sabrina room. <laughs> It'd be like some little nook like that. I'm like, whoa, Sabrina! <laughs> you can you can make this real nice. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> she loved that room. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's a like closet. Yeah. Yeah. It's bathroom. Was like a what house is that? Uh, it was the one. I don't remember. Know. You remember? It was the one in Furland Park, like a little bit. The one where, like, Shade and Dakota, like, got in a fight over you, over no. that sleepover. Oh, so the King's Cove house? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it was that oh, house. Because they had their room, and then they had the bathroom, and then, like, a closet. <laughs> Yeah, and Sabrina was it in the was... closet. I vaguely remember that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and it had like a princess canopy bed. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I vaguely yeah, remember yeah. that because you were across the room, the house, on that house, right? Yeah, yeah. your room was across. He was all, all the way across. He was yeah. the furthest away from their room. He was like all the way in the opposite okay. corner. Yeah, right. we all were. Like, I remember because I, I, I like snuck on his laptop and this same. man like literally like placed his mouse in a specific way. That way he knew if we like went on went on it. <laughs> and he figured out that we played on it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so who? B5. I didn't care. Which I funny little bumps. <laughs> <laughs> I remember coming home and being so mad at you and uh, Cassia, your sister. Why? sister. Oh, every time I'd come home. Look at his face change. You saw that? Oh, I saw that. Every single time I'd come home, they'd be in my room fucking it up. Oh, my God. And how <laughs> All the time. You were young, but it was still annoying. <laughs> I'd come home and my room was messed up. Here was the more annoying part. You couldn't get into Amanda's room because she had a little high lock on the oh, thing. Oh, the McKinney house. <clears throat> yeah. She had the high lock on her door. <clears throat> and so you guys couldn't ever get in there. You just go in my room, mess up all my toys, break some stuff occasionally. And like, I would come out to Graham. I remember asking Graham, I'm like, why can I get a lock so they can't go in? 
She's like, no. I'm like, why? If a man has one, the girls go in there and just mess everything up. And I remember her, I told him, like, that's not fair. She said, life's not fair. And then I said, and that's just the line that gets him every time. I said, well, when you have, I said, when you, well, when you can make it fair, why do you choose not to? Mm-hmm. And, she, and then she'd be like, I forgot what she would say, honestly. But like, I just, I just knew I got her. Because whatever came after that, it was more of like, Sion, we're done talking. Yeah. Or something like that. I'm uh, like, gotcha. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm right. You got it. <laughs> I used to hit her with that line on time. But life's not fair. I'm like, well, when you have the power to make it fair, why don't you? And then she'd be like, she'd just be mad Why'd at me. Why'd you ever go to dad? He probably didn't. I probably did. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, honestly don't know. All I remember is asking her and I'm hearing, life's not fair. And I used to say it all the time. Because Amanda had her little lock. Yeah. yeah. But nobody can put a lock for me. <laughs> and yeah, I remember coming home sometimes and you, I would see you dart out, <laughs> see you again, <laughs> run into uh, grandma and grandpa. I'm like, she was in my... <laughs> and looking and seeing the damage done. Toys everywhere, yeah. things all messed. I'm like... <laughs> but I remember, I just remember you guys would dart out because you guys knew I was I was home from school and then... <laughs> I just see you pass by me. <laughs> I'm like, these fuck girls. What's <laughs> 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 up <laughs> What's weird about that house is like any nightmare I've ever had takes place in that house. McKinney? Really? Yeah. Like for no reason. I've never had like bad energy. You're talking there. about McKinney? Yeah. I don't when like I'm McKinney there. House. See, I don't like that house either. But like any bad dream I've ever had takes place in that house. And some are like not even like it's not me in the dream. It's like someone else. Yeah, no, the McKinney house is up there. It's weird. Too many people in that house. Before. And I don't have bad dreams about anything else. I don't like to make any ass either. It's so out. weird. Cassie, Maybe we like should uh, call it. it. Yeah. Cheers. Yay. Yay. Cheers. Thank you. Press Feliciano. One. There we go. Yeah. Feliciano. Enjoy it. We did it, bitches. Mm-hmm. <laughs>